Okay, I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the Pledge of the Flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Welcome everybody to our Elton Town meeting. Thank you all for coming. How many is here for the public hearing tonight on the fiscal year? All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay. I wanted to mention that uh, today is the 365th day that Mr. Van Reenen and myself have served for the town of Elton during this term. So tomorrow, tomorrow will be our first year anniversary. Uh, with that, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of May 20th, 2015? So moved. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Financial report and disbursement of the funds. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a motion? A second. And a second. Any discussion on the financial report? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I wanted to give a real quick uh, reading of uh, our funds, if I could. Uh, currently, as of today, in our general fund, we have $1,245,537. 51 cents. In our water fund, we have $1,927.916.11. One million. What did I say? One thousand. All right. There we go. I brought it way down. Sewer fund, we have seven million one hundred eighty-nine thousand eight hundred sixty-nine dollars and forty-three cents. Our major facility fund, we have five million nine hundred eighty. $6,505.02 for a total of $16,348,828.07. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to uh, make everyone aware with uh, the volume of people that we have here tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll keep it down. These microphones will pick up all the noise and it creates a lot of chatter for us to hear. So hopefully uh, when we get an opportunity to speak, please come up to the mic. And, and try to keep the discussion down between yourselves uh, throughout the course of the meeting. Next up, we have a presentation. You got that. Go ahead, Charlie. You're you on. Have it. Mayor, commissioners, and audience, uh, the young lady who is the recipient of the Elton Town Commissioner Scholarship was a freshman when I was uh, last at Elton High School my last year before I retired. Uh, she is graduating with a 3.89 GPA, grade point average, out of a possible 4.0. She is ranked 25th in a class of 253 students at Alton High School. She's a member of the National Honor Society. She volunteers at Union Hospital. She's a, had an internship in health care with Alton High School. And she plans to attend Cecil College in the fall to major in occupational therapy. With that being said, I would like to introduce the board and the audience to Lindsay Steinmus. Very good. 
It is 7.05 and next on the agenda is the public hearing for the fiscal year 2016 budget introduction. And I want to stress this is the introduction for the budget. Uh, after I introduce it, I'm going to go through a little bit uh, about the budget changes this year, what we're doing. And uh, at that point, uh, the floor will be open up to the public uh, to speak on the budget. And I have a list of folks that want to speak on the budget. And uh, just take a few minutes and uh, uh, state your comments, questions, concerns. And we'll have at least two weeks to get them answered to you prior to hopefully the adoption at the second uh, or the third meeting in June. So with that, uh, could we have the... Coming up, it's warming up. I see it's slightly warming up. <coughs> Our proposed budget uh, for 2016, and uh, <coughs> I'll go through it real quickly with everyone, then, then we'll go to the highlights of uh, this year's budget. Uh, but you know, before, before I get to that, I do want to say one other thing. Uh, it's been 365 days since I've been elected, and there was one commitment that I made to the town of Elton uh, during the campaign run, and that was to reduce the water rates. I am very pleased to state that we did reduce the water rates by 11% during this first year. So I'm very proud of that. One of the other things that we continue to run on is creating jobs. Let's get some good jobs. Let's work with new businesses. Let's work with existing businesses to try to create more and more jobs. Well, I am pleased here tonight to tell you that working with Trumo Medical, we're going to create 100 new jobs. 100 new jobs. That's going to take place here within the, uh, within the next uh, start to process gene. What would you say? Next, next several months. We're looking, uh, looking for a projection into next year. <coughs> Wonderful thing for Trumo, high paying jobs. I can't get into too much detail about it, but it's a wonderful thing. It tells you the positive motion is moving forward and a lot of positive things are happening. Uh, I was told, told not to say this one, and I'm not gonna say it, but we have another uh, entity in our town that is gonna do possibly a two to three acre expansion of their business. So it is working, it's gonna create more jobs, high paying jobs. So I just want to really stress that I believe a lot of these things are starting to work. The momentum's going in the right way. The economy's coming back. Uh, so leading into this, I believe it's working. So I want to tell you, we want to tie up about, when we look at the general government uh, budget, we're looking at $1,429,573. Public safety, you'll see, is our uh, biggest uh, chunk of our budget. $6,362,138 goes into the public safety. Our public works department uh, section is $4,182,156. Our parks and rec, things that we do for uh, the, the people in our community, $481,678. Our debt service on everything that we're putting together for Fiscal 2016 will be $448,800. Our economic development, this is a, an area that we're increasing. I'm increasing it to $200,000, and I got a little presentation I'm going to show you here in a minute. Uh, donations, uh, community promotion. Uh, in this budget, we have $18,865 set aside for uh, community uh, uh, donations. And of course, our fire company. Uh, the way that we look at it right now, it'll be about $131,735 that uh, will be given to Singerly Fire Company uh, uh, around this time next year. So our total uh, general fund expenditures, uh, $13,254,945. When you look at it on the pie chart, you can see exactly how we were saying it. Public safety takes up about 48% of the town's budget. 32% goes to public works. 11% is general government. That's uh, the financing staff. That's uh, the mayor and commissioners. Donations that we give back to the community out of that whole budget is 1%. Our debt service is about 3%. Our parks and rec is right at 4%. And as you can see, economic development, how we promote our town is at 1%. So uh, on to the next slide. Uh, 
we're proposing for total full-time employees for the town for fiscal year 2016 111 uh, total employees currently I think we're at how many I think we're about eight or nine short of that uh, but over last year we were even budgeted about the same amount I think we're adding uh, one additional person from this year from last year I think is the number uh, but I'm not a hundred percent sure of that okay go to the next one uh, full-time employees you'll see that 52 percent of our employee workforce is with public safety 32 percent with public works uh, 15 percent in general government and three percent in parks and rec a uh, couple of the highlights for the budget uh, these are probably the uh, most important parts that uh, mean anything to anybody is that uh, we're going to keep the same ta tax rate as we did in fiscal year 15. That tax rate will be 0.5856. Uh, we're due, we have to, uh, we're proposing a new quarterly trash collection fee to cover the contract costs of the town of Elton and decrease landfill rebate from the county. Now I want to really stress that this budget is very conservative uh, and we're putting some projections out there that we're not 100% sure of these actual costs as we go forward. But I, I'm, error, I'm making my error on the side of uh, uh, the taxpayer. So included in this proposal, there will be a 69 cents quarterly increase to trash collection fee. And that will uh, cover the cost of the possible added cost from Cecil County. 69 cents, it's gonna cost each of our taxpayers uh, 25 cents uh, additional per, per month. Uh, the proposed salary adjustments in this budget. Uh, there'll be a total of 5% total increase to the Elton Police Department sworn officers. Now that part of the budget, I want to make it very clear that there is a, uh, a bargaining, collective bargaining or uh, collective, bargaining. collective bargaining agreement uh, with the Elton Police Department and these are fixed numbers. These are going back to that 53% of the uh, budget side for the Police Department. Uh, that's truly somewhat out of our hands. Uh, there is an agreement that the taxpayers of the town of Elton voted on collective bargaining, I think in 2007 or 2000, what was it, five? In 2005, uh, the town of Elton voted in favor of collective bargaining. So these things are uh, uh, kind of etched in stone. Non-police employees, and that's uh, including uh, all of the other employees in the town will be getting a 5% increase on their salary for this fiscal year. There hasn't been an increase in any of the salaries for any of the employees, I think, since 2011. Is that correct in saying that? Is that the right year? Not a merit, but it means no merit. Cost correct. of living has been done. Yeah, we've had some cost of living increases, but not an actual salary adjustment. Uh, we're recognizing. Uh, that we're going to have a full staff of 45 sworn police officers for fiscal year 16. Now I want to stress that we're recognizing that. Uh, I think we're currently chief eight officers short. That's correct. And we have another one or two getting ready to retire, one or not? Uh, one. One for sure. Yeah. Uh, I want to compliment you on your haircut I see there. Tonight. <laughs> so, uh, so the uh, 45 sworn officers uh, that we have, we're, currently we're eight short. Uh, I can truly tell you, we will not be at full staff through the course of the year. Just going through the, the planning and the process and the lie detectors and the, the physicals, uh, if we are able to fill four of those positions, I think we've accomplished a lot. Uh, we're hoping to be at full staff, but I don't believe that we will. But I have to budget for all that salary for all those employees as though that we were going to be fully staffed on July 1. There's no way we're going to be fully staffed on July 1. So when you see the money I'm pulling from the uh, uh, general fund surplus, that's one of the reasons why I have to pull that much, to recognize uh, everyone's going to be fully employed at that point. The Department of Public Works is going to be stressing and, and, and doing a a reorganization down at the Pub, uh, Public Works Department. We're going to add a new mechanic, a couple uh, part-time maintenance workers. Uh, we're going to be switching some push positions around. We're reclassifying uh, a couple positions and that's going to uh, make up a difference of some dollars. Michelle? 
Uh, along within the budget, as we talked about, there's an allocation of $200,000 for economic development. There's $50,000 for the purchase of new downtown Christmas decorations. That's something that we haven't replaced in years and years and years, and uh, now it's time to do it. Uh, also, in the Public Works uh, budget, it includes $70,000 for the East Main Street sidewalk project. Uh, that's been something that's been on the books with the town for many years, but it's never been budgeted. Uh, we've committed to get that done. There's $50,000 worth of sidewalk grinding that we're going to be doing with uh, uh, a company. It, I'm sure it'll probably be precise uh, concrete. Uh, the, side, the sidewalk grinding is uh, in areas, if you go out in the front of our uh, building here, you'll see areas that have been ground. And uh, it, it prevents the tripping hazard. What happens over the years is your sidewalks start to raise or actually to sink. And it could be because of tree roots, it could be settling of the ground. This uh, allows us to grind it even, and it doesn't allow uh, us to re have to replace the whole slab of concrete, which is a tremendous savings. Uh, we also uh, have put into the budget uh, $50,000 for wayfinding signs. New signage for our town of Elton, all of our town, so it would be in an area that uh, you'll be able to locate exactly where you're going at. Um, loan proceeds in the amount of $406,000 for the purchase of the capital equipment. Uh, we got uh, debt service for fiscal year capital at $87,658. The fund balance I need to use in this amount is going to be for $1,732,014. That's approximately 39% of the unassigned fund balance of $4.456 million that we had uh, through the accounting process. Uh, is there a number 15? Let's go to the economic development. Before I open it up for, uh, the floor for the public, uh, I, I promised the board that I'm going to continue to go with uh, all right, my, my economic development uh, presentation. And uh, you know, it's for the town of Elton economic development plan. Helped in the head of Elk, heart of the community. It's kind of my theme here a little bit. Our number one priorities. I want to promote the business district in the town of Elton. We want to try to continue to attract new businesses, assist in existing businesses with expansion plans, servicing the needs of existing businesses. We want to coordinate and promote the business development plans and creation of a volunteer base. Volunteers are very important to the mix of this, and we have to continue to create that base. Can you flip it now to the next one? All right. Strategic plan. We have to have marketing. We have to have promotions. We have to have advertising. We have to increase our software. We have to be up and running uh, uh, with the new from the website and social media. I think everyone sat here knows how how social media works, right? <laughs> I think there was a, a large crowd that wouldn't be here if it wasn't for social media tonight. It works. Uh, events and consultations. Under marketing, we've got to look at our branding. Who are we in Elton? Our image, our new tagline, campaign workshops, breakout sessions. Uh, we've got to talk about these things. It costs money to, to identify and find out where our weaknesses are. We also have to know where our strengths are. I believe we, we know these uh, items uh, as we're starting to move forward, but these are some things that cost money to make it happen. Promotions, flyers, merchandises, giveaways, brochures, events, videos. We have to continue to market ourselves every day to try to bring in and attract new businesses. If we don't do that and we stay status quo, Guess what? I can tell you 10 years from now it'll be the same old town. We're going to grow little bit by little bit, uh, but we have to do these things and I continue to say, give me one year with this and I think that you'll see a world of difference when I'm saying uh, happy anniversary second year, Commissioner Van Rena. <laughs> so on to the next one. Events, some of the events that we uh, will be working with, we'll have the Antique Roadshow, of course, the Small Business Person of the Year, the Elton Citizen of the Year. We're going to continue to have monthly downtown classic car shows. Uh, we're going to create the new Elton Festival of the Arts uh, event. Uh, we got music on Main. We got the Memorial Day Parade, which I promise you will be bigger and better than ever to honor our uh, veterans. 
We've got the uh, National Marriage Day. We've got the Pauls on the Pavement, the Elton Fall Fest, the Halloween Parade, the winter holiday events, which are going to be including the Christmas tree lighting ceremony, the Old Fashioned Christmas tree, uh, uh, Old Fashioned Christmas, and the cookie throwdown. I see the winners here. And I have to tell you, those <laughs> cookies were absolutely fantastic. And I'd like to say during the Relay for Life, um, Marjorie, uh, uh, I had just edged me out because of those cookies. <laughs> the tasks ahead of us, you know, we have to manage. We have to manage this. We have we have an entertainment district. We have to make sure that we attend the right quarterly meetings. We got to apply for grants. We got to make sure that we educate everyone with the monthly reports and yearly reports to everyone here at this board. Uh, we got to man manage the Main Street program. The town of Elton uh, made a commitment to the state that we're going to continue to uh, work on our Main Street, and there's a five-point approach. You know, it's promotions, design, organization, economic uh, restructuring. We want to make our town clean, safe, and green. The town of Elton was very fortunate to uh, get a facade grant program. Uh, we've, uh, we're going to continue to work with that. We've got to apply for more grants, community merchants, uh, the merchant meetings, we want to listen to the concerns. We want to help with rental assistance with, with all of our businesses throughout the whole town. And we also want to work on uh, helping uh, property owners sell their properties. Uh, let's get in here who we want. Let's, uh, let's mold this town to what we want to do. And you know, my goal is, is maintaining a strong and diverse economy to further enhance the town of Elton <coughs> residents' quality of life. I mean, that's the goal here. That is truly the goal that we want to achieve with this program. And it's going to take money to make this happen. Our economic plan, if we plant the seeds, I promise you we'll have success. So that's kind of my plan in a nutshell. It's not a very, uh, if you want more of the nuts and uh, bolts, I can give it to you as you ask. But uh, that's the plan as I see it fit today. Uh, there was a few things that I didn't have on my slide. I want to make sure that I tell everyone what we're what we're getting here as far as capital equipment and uh, I had a sheet up here on my capital equipment but I'm going to go off the hip. There were several uh, pieces of uh, uh, new trucks for the Public Works Department. I think a total of, Steve can I ask you how many? Oh, here we go, I got it. Thank you, Mary Jo. Uh, in fact, I'll start at the top. I'll go with the public uh, service, the police department. We're going to be buying in that capital uh, fund that you saw up there. We're going to be acquiring six new police cars. These are going to be additional uh, vehicles, which we call mobile workstations. Uh, inside these, the, the equipment to inside a police car today, it truly is a mobile unit. There's uh, more information that they can give you in that uh, uh, a police car than they can when they come back here to headquarters to get that information. Uh, there's also, uh, uh, we're going to uh, budget for body camera system for the police department. Now I want to stress that the body camera systems are not going to be coming out of the general fund. We're going to be applying for a couple police grants, but also I want to stress that's going to come out of the uh, seized fund account. So when we make arrests, uh, the police uh, are able to confiscate, compensate, confiscate uh, dollars uh, from, uh, I'm going to use the word, drug dealers. Absolutely. And uh, that money is uh, put into an account, and when it, once it's forfeited, it becomes property of the town of Elton. Uh, we are going to use that money, which I think we have about $170,000 in our forfeited seized fund account, and we're going to take $90,000 of it. Uh, and put toward the body cameras, which will provide a safer atmosphere for all. I think that the body cameras will not only uh, keep uh, our, our residents in check where we can all see what's happening, but it's also will make sure it keeps our police officers in check that we're doing the right thing all the time also. Uh, Chief, how many body cameras uh, is that in this system? Uh, 35 to 40. 35 to 40 is the number. Uh, in the municipal building, we have a building here which is about uh, 20,000 square feet, and uh, 
one thing that we've been lacking is a floor cleaning uh, a piece of equipment and uh, uh, I, I think we promised uh, Jimmy for years and years we're going to get him some equipment well this year I put into the budget twenty thousand dollars for floor, floor cleaning equipment whether it's a shampoo or scrubber polisher stripper whatever it may be I think that he'll be able to do the floors uh, phenomenally in this building the building inspection uh, we're going to pick up one additional pickup truck in the public works department which I started this conversation on we're going to be ordering two new five ton dump trucks four salt spreaders for the F-250 trucks, two new F-350 trucks, a dump trailer, an F-550 dump truck with a plow and salt spreader. Uh, this had the chipper, but we removed the chipper off of it. So uh, we removed the chipper. There is no chipper anymore. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm looking at Dan. Uh, so we removed that from the budget, and that was a $40,000 uh, item that uh, Public Works was able to get uh, the old chipper up and running uh, so we didn't have to uh, have an expense for a new one. Uh, we are going to buy a new 48 inch mower which would be able to cut around our stormwater management ponds. Uh, we're going to get a towable air compressor uh, and also a hydraulic metal bending uh, tubing and bender uh, unit. Parks and Rec uh, was in need of a SUV that they could uh, move from point A to point B with equipment. Uh, we're also going to uh, put in the budget an automated, uh, automated, automatic external defibrillator, some folding chairs and storage carts. Uh, upstairs, we needed a new screen. Uh, we're going to put a projector in upstairs. And uh, on the second floor, if no one's ever been upstairs, we've got a beautiful meeting room, and the oven went down. So we're going to put the oven, replace the oven, and uh, where we'd be able to do our uh, uh, prepping for uh, the kitchens. Um, it seems like I'm forgetting something. Uh, was our second sheet to this? Uh, we have ordered uh, in the budget also we're going to have a downtown uh, speaker system. Uh, so from North Street to Main Street and Howard Street, we're going to have speakers on wherever we can uh, put them on in place. And we'll be able to have a central location to where if we're having a parade through town or an event through town, uh, everyone will be able to hear what's happening. Uh, from one location. So we're pretty excited about that. With that, I think I covered everything that I had in the budget. And this is a public hearing on the budget. And I'd like to uh, invite Ms. Margie Blystone of 14 John Adams Lane. She has a uh, comment on the budget. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Good evening. I'm going to be quick. <laughs> I didn't grow up here. I'm not. I'm what you call a transplant to Elkton. Our family moved here September 2003, but nine years ago this town adopted me. Elkton welcomed me, gave me the opportunity to get involved and develop me in its history and its present day charm. Through volunteering, the returns have been a thousandfold, providing me wonderful friendships, incredible opportunities, and amazing experiences. Long story short, I've invested nine years of my personal money, time, and energy into this town, and I'd like to take this opportunity to express my support for Mayor Alt's budget plan. I'm an Alliance board member and also hold the position of Elkins Arts and Entertainment Chair District Chairman. I can attest to the difficulties and frustrations my fellow board members and I face working towards promoting and providing activities to boost community pride and encourage economic development with the limited budget we've had to contend with. It is through these activities that we're able to create a draw for, for visitors to our town. Visitors who spend their dollars here and are encouraged to set up their businesses here thus increasing our overall potential for growth and prosperity. I have seen firsthand what we've been able to accomplish on limited resources, and I'm excited at the prospect of how far we'll be able to take Elkton with your support for this budget plan. I respectfully appeal to you, the commissioners, tonight to vote to accept Mayor Alt's budget plan to invest in the bright future of our beautiful town. We are Elkton. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bob Litzenberg, 105 Walnut, come on down. Thank you. 
Good morning, lady, gentlemen, and Mr. Mayor. This might not be a few questions. There is three, there's three more seats up front, I think, that they had left if anyone wants to sit up in the front. Thank you. I'm sorry, Bob. We hear about your economic development, but who's going to be administering this money? There's going to be uh, the money, there's going to be $100,000 that will be going to the Elton Alliance, <coughs> and then the other $100,000 is going to be administered uh, as we need it. You mean the town council will administer it? That's correct. Okay. See, everything we heard here about the, the money was all about the downtown. How about the rest of the town? Are you going to be working with them also? 100%. Okay. 100%. Let's go to page, page two. Under your recreation services charge, is that the monies that are brought in through fees with the public, with the uh, Parks and Rec? Uh, I'm looking at 348, and the answer is yes. I, I am going to have to look over. I'm going to hate to look over, Bob, but I'm going to have to look over a little bit. The answer is yes. Let's go to page 22. Parks and Rec's budget, $481,000 Salaries are $315,599 for, for three people, a parks direct, director, program coordinator, clerical position. Sounds like it's an awful lot of money for three people. That's all the summer people yeah, I believe that that includes all the summer help. And I'm not exactly sure how many summer help people there would be, but it does include the summer. Summer help include It does. And, and I... I uh, If you're and program people too are charged in salaries now. Mm -hmm. These structures and this separate programs have been have previously been paid for as contracted. Uh, so they're as they're considered town employees just yeah. like council is. Absolutely. I understand. They're not full time with benefits. Though. Well it just says numerous part time doesn't give you any numbers whatsoever on that. Because you don't know the number. But when you've got, if you're only bringing in $131,000, it looks to me like maybe your Parks and Rec director ought to be soliciting contributions from businesses, vendors that do uh, supply material, whatever it may be for the town. In the past, uh, Severn Trent's given a large amount of money to, to one organization that's a county organization, not the town, that does basically the same thing. Artesian, Ingram, and last and least, but the Elton Gas recently. I think that you ought to be contacting her. You can't ask any money from them because that's soliciting money from them or whatever it may be, or the old old Italian way of doing it. But I think that she should be made aware that they ought to be going after some of this money that's been going out of the town to other parts of the county. Is that noted? Uh, it is well noted. In fact, uh, one of the discussions that we've had is I, it's very obvious to me that the uh, uh, Parks and Rec budget doesn't balance at all in their department. Not a bit. And uh, uh, that is an absolute goal to get that to where, in fact, where the revenue is greater than the expenditures in that department. And I think we can get there. I'm not saying they don't do a good job. I'm not saying that. But I mean, it just seems like there's more money spent in what you're getting back in any kind of return. Well, all your salaries have all increased. We understand that. Now, on page eight, and you and I, Robbie, discussed this earlier. Yep. A while back. And I can't answer that one. And this full salaries, forty-one thousand six or oh six seven. That's one person. The benefits are twenty-eight thousand nine hundred and sixty. Seventy thousand dollars total. That doesn't make any sense to me where you couldn't have a vendor come in here and do that a whole lot cheaper. Well, you're 100% you're it's a lot of money. Uh, the, we just recently got the notice it's going to be, this included the 9% increase in health care costs. Uh, the benefits uh, for 
for paying for a full-time employee on a family plan is truly 20,000 about what was the number twenty thousand dollars five hundred is the cost is the cost to the town for a and I think we're we're at uh, the employee pays 15 15 percent uh, but that is truly the cost for a family uh, uh, of for health care right. well if you're you're short of personnel in public works wouldn't it be feasible to transfer him to public works and, and hire somebody to come in here once a week or twice a week or once a day to do the cleaning? Wouldn't it be cheaper in the long run? It's, it, it would be. I can tell you I've been looking at it, but I will say that uh, he is going full bore here. Uh, that employee is, is here all the time. I well, mean, I'm not questioning his yes. ability or his work ethic. I'm not questioning that. I'm just I'm looking at figures. Yep. You know, and it looks like it's an awful lot of money. Okay, page 11. I think I know the answer, but I'm not sure. On your personnel, the contract of service is 56000 Is that uh, what, the, what you're farming out to that uh, personnel company down in Towson or whatever it may be? It's, it's our HR department. Yeah, and that's what you're doing here. That's They're correct. doing the work instead of being in-house. That is correct. Okay. Let me go back. I got this page this way. Page. Page eight. Under general service municipal buildings. You got your heat, your electricity, your heat, your natural gas, so and so and so forth. Who pays for the electric, the heat, the gas, and the telephone at the old town hall? Currently the town. The town pays for all that. That is correct. Do they collect any rent from anyone? We don't collect any rent. Are you going to? The uh, game plan is yes. Well, I can tell you that we, in the budget, it has been separated out. Uh, the, the amount of water bills and the sewer bills for every entity in all nonprofits throughout the course of the town, I have it separated. And then we've talked about actually giving, uh, sending a bill, but I will tell you it's going to wash out with a donation back. Uh, it sounds, uh, well, but they I will can see that. You're it, putting 200000 in it's, something. And it, it's going to wash yeah. itself back out, but the answer is to answer your question, uh, uh, that entity in that building that you're talking about won't be in that building. Okay. They won't do. Part of the, it, be you know, I don't really want to get there and step on anyone's toes, but I will tell you this, that part of the plan is, is that uh, uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Elton will not be in uh, the, the uh, building where they're at. by the town. That's correct. I don't have any, I don't think anybody has any problem that your nonprofit's not paying the water bill and, and so forth. They, they really shouldn't have to. Okay, it takes care of that. Page 21, let me see what I'm doing this one. Okay, I've already addressed that with parts in there. Last year's budget was 11 million some odd. I, I, I discarded my last year's budget so I couldn't get back and refer to that. But I think that you told me that there was close to a million dollars of last year's budget that wasn't spent. That's correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if that wasn't spent last year, you're told that brings that budget down to ten million dollars, and this budget you've got now is thirteen million dollars. Sounds like it's a, a lot of money between the two. And and I can I can tell you that I feel that there will probably be out of the one point seven million dollars uh, that we're using of that general fund money, I feel extremely comfortable that uh, there's going to be a large portion of it not spent. Not spent. Not spent. And. Uh, from an auditing standpoint, you really don't know what your uh, uh, rainy day fund is until uh, the auditing process ends in June on June 30th of that fiscal year. Uh, but we normally don't find out until about five to six months later of the actual number. And to give you an example, right now we're using a number of 4.4 million dollars as the number, but. Uh, 
I better not go out on the limb to say I think it's actually going to be higher than that number with the uh, uh, the next uh, audit when it comes in. <laughs> I believe it will be. I got my fingers crossed yeah. it's higher. Uh, hope. I got hope. Yeah. We hear a lot about under under um, employed departments. Well, most of these departments you didn't spend with the with the number of, of personnel you have this past year. You didn't spend over your overtime. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't spend over your overtime and you got the same amount of work done, how can you say that you're you're understaffed? I mean, somebody must be doing something very efficiently, which is a good thing. Uh, I think that we're trying to cut back over time. I'm, I'm talking about what you've got here as opposed to last year. I mean, last year, you go back on that on the uh, the worksheet you had because mm -hmm. you had actuals and so on and so forth. Most of the overtime was not spent with the same number of employees, but you keep they keep asking for more employees. They're always short-handed, but they still get the same job done without use it going into their overtime. That's, that, in business, you would think that they'd be using the overtime mm -hmm. if they're short-handed. understand. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The police vehicles, this is always a question. You never get a real answer on these. Okay. Three cars last month, $122,000 came out to $46,000. You had $122,000 $122, left over. So you buy three police cars at $46,000 a piece. This year you got six in the budget at $178,200, which comes out to $29,700. Uh -huh. Are they the same cars or what? Uh, you know, I'd have to defer the chief to that, but I, I think you're moving some of the equipment over. Some of the equipment will be moved over. Uh, some can't. Uh, I, I think the uh, six that uh, we put in for uh, coming up, uh, we will be able to use more of the uh, existing equipment as opposed to the three body equipment just uh, was shot when I able to use it. And, and, and I, I wanted to, uh, I'm glad you brought up the police cars. Uh, the, the goal here is to get where the oldest vehicle, I consider it in the fleet, is at a 10 year life span. And uh, currently by acquiring those three cars, and these six cars were actually in that 10, were actually, I think, in year 11. I think our oldest car will be a 2004, mm -hmm. I believe is the latest. And the same thing with public works. Our goal is to get everything in a cycle so that we can kind of plan five years out to say, okay, here's, here's what we can do in the future. And we could even miss a year. It won't hurt us so bad. But we've had, uh, we still had cars from 19, I think our oldest police cars are 98. Mm -hmm. I think is what we have now, and then in public works, it was uh, very similar. I've got a '78 car still driving. Yeah, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all. Right. All right. I think your budget might be a little inflated in different things. The body cameras is a good thing to protect anybody in, in public service like that because what's going on in this country today? You, you can't be envious of the police. They arrest people, and these people right here in town are on the street faster than they come back here to something to form. And I think that's due to the liberal judges we have or something, which has nothing to do with this. Thank you, Bob. Okay, we got Mr. Jim Krause, if he'd like to come say a few words. 451 North Street. We've got two former mayors in the house tonight, i got to say. Good evening. Uh, Three former. I guess I'm a former mayor, too. That's correct, Mayor. You, yes. You said the, this term when you, and yes. you were here before, you were being guided by a master at that time. I hear you. <laughs> First, a couple comments that uh, take away a lot of, uh, not a lot, I, I, I really, I want to compliment you, Mr. Mayor, on a tremendous presentation of the budget. Whether you like it or don't like it, you provided knowledge. And knowledge is what's very important, which is why we ask questions. It's not to be critical, it's to ask questions. Clarity. For some of us who'd like to look at numbers, it's clarity, okay? 
with that, I, I have about three or four things. Won't take long. Okay. Um, the employees pay approximately, percentage-wise, how much are their health benefits now? Fifteen percent. Is that correct, Beth? Yeah. Okay. I, looking through the revenue section of the budget, I see nowhere where there's an entry that shows the revenue enters the town's coffers. How do we currently do that? It's just an offset to expense. It's not, no, you have to show it as a revenue in order to have it offset to expense. I'm asking where and it's put. That's the net, that's the net, the budget expense is the net expense to the town, which is net of just 85% cost of the policy. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. Mr. Repo, you have a $13 million budget, okay? You're going to bring in $13 million and you'd like to spend $13 million. I'm just asking where in the $13 million of revenue is it outlined in these various categories. I'm not questioning that it's not an expense, but you have to, when you have an expense that's an offset, as you're saying, and I understand that, it should still show as revenue to the town. It's budgeted as the net expense to the town. It doesn't show the revenue side. Well, that's, that's not proper fund accounting, sir. It is in my experience. Well, I, I'll, I'll be happy. If I will. I'll come in and show you that where it's not. But that's that's. But I, you understand what I'm trying to say? No, I see your budget's higher than it is. Okay. Yeah. When you take money from the employees from anybody, it's got to show as a revenue. And it's, it's and I understand it's a wash, as you pointed out, Mayor, on other issues. Um, okay, so I'll move along. Um, the again, Mayor. Um, you mentioned with a lot of your your various um, well thought out ideas of ways to move Elton forward, and I think they're tremendous. Um, I'm curious as to again looking at budgeting revenues. Okay, mm -hmm. is the how much of when you say you mentioned grants several times? Okay, how much do you anticipate of the money coming in as revenue? Where is it also in the budget? In other words, I think it's appropriate to speculate you're going to get. You've got experience from past budgets of how much you get in grant money. I don't see a line item in this budget that says income for grants. And, and you're correct. Uh, the, the I, then I'd like to suggest, yep. I'm not, I'd rather than debate it, yep. let's just, you know, I, then maybe we ought to take a guess because it's really money that's going to be, even though it's a wash, mm -hmm. it is income in and expense going out. I will note that. Thank you. Well, yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, that, uh, I'm sure there's an expense, or excuse me, a, uh, an experience. Uh, um, everything else, Mr. Mayor, is all positive. And I don't think what I've said is not positive. No, 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 not at all. Um, um, I was going to be here. My sole purpose tonight was to talk about jobs. I, I commend you all to announce that you've got a hundred new jobs coming I challenge you all to make it 200 when you celebrate your second year as mayor this term and Mr. Van Ren celebrates as a commissioner and the rest of you are here helping um, I'd like to see you as part of your promotions um, we saw a presentation a couple meetings ago about the arts event and so uh -huh. forth, really impressive. Uh -huh. um, I think we should have a welcome bag for all these 100 new employees that are going to come to Elkton. And maybe it's a good idea that we could really spend some money there. I'm, I'm spending money, let's look out. Um, but, <laughs> but I'm serious. Yeah. Why not have a, a bag that a new person comes as a new employee and that we distribute out to people who are going to live in this community of how to find out thing, things out. You're right on. You're right on. If you want to promote Elkton, let's do it first class. Mm -hmm. the, the only other thing I'm going to add, and this is watch out now, Mayor, but I think in your planning process should begin the thoughts of a parking garage in downtown Elkton. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, um, I'm going to figure out how to do this nicely. It's very frustrating when you go downtown and you see folks who own, run, rent stores and their vehicles are parked on Main Street. And I'm not being critical, but 
I think if we had a facility, it would handle the growth. Uh, I think there is space, if you will. We got to change the reference of down back. We all know where down back is. I mean, it's Howard Street. Um, that that could be, you know, with a, a an off-light day doing hotels with a little bridge that comes over right to Main Street and dumps the people right out in downtown Elkton. Um, I don't think it's uh, too far out to be thinking about it. I think that it's probably not as expensive as you think it is. And, and uh, I think the hospital showed that when they put that garage up and it came in overnight and a whole bunch of pieces and it was like a rector set going together. But uh, I would encourage you to do so. And, and again, I, I compliment you, Rob, on, on a great presentation um, and to the board to that 100 jobs is, is what I want to hear because it's the only way to bring this community back to where there's homes being sold and, and, uh, and so forth. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, Miss Mary Beth Cole, 107 East Main Street. As she's making her way up here, there was one other, a uh, couple other things I, I, I didn't mention in the budget. Uh, one I didn't, the town of Elton entered into an agreement uh, to put a solar panel farm in on, on uh, Route 40 next to our wastewater treatment plant. We believe uh, in our estimated savings, it's going to save us $130,000 per year in electrical savings. We did not include any of that savings, even though we believe that the, the it'll be up and running by Christmas. Uh, I haven't seen any action over there yet at this point, so I think we did the right thing of not putting that additional savings into the budget. But projecting out, if it's done by Christmas, I can tell you there's going to be a $65,000 savings to the town when it comes to the electricity side of the budget. So that's a, a huge savings uh, that we can talk about. Yes, ma'am, come on down. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, I came here tonight, first of all, um, to say thank you for everything that you guys did to promote this town when Restaurant Impossible came, because you guys did an amazing job, and not only am I the benefit of it, but this whole town has been the benefit of it. And what I saw in your proposal, um, prior to coming tonight, I took the time to actually, even though I can't vote in this town because I don't live here, I'm just a business person, but I'm a tax-paying business person. and. It meant a lot to me to go through that budget and look at it, and I was impressed by it. I was impressed by it because I've got people now every single day. Matter of fact, we kept a little log, and we've had 38 visitors since April 22nd that have walked into our store that have come from <laughs> greater than 50 <laughs> miles away to come into this town of Elkton. And they're not only coming to Lyons Pharmacy, they're coming to other businesses as well. They're coming to the galleries, they're walking the streets, and they're impressed by our little town, and they love our little town. And I think that where you are taking this town with jobs and economic development is where we need to go in the future. And so I'm here tonight to say that I'm asking each of the commissioners to support your budget and to please vote for it, because it's where this town needs to go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have Miss Danielle Carroll, 200 Kentmere. As Danielle is working her way up, there is another. Can I say anything about the possible hotel? Uh, I just went, come on down. But I also, but now I also wanted to mention that uh, we will have a Fairfield Inn here very shortly, also. So I'm throwing these little teasers in as we go. But that's going to be an additional revenue source of income that I did not calculate into the budget also. Come on down, Miss Danielle. Thank you. Um, I just really wanted to talk to the board and say I'm very impressed with the way things have been going over the last year. Um, Rob, I think you introduced it, it's got to be months ago, <laughs> but um, I love how you disclose where all the dollars sit at the beginning of every meeting. I think it's very important. I think with the proposed budget, it kind of echoes what you and the board have discussed throughout the year. Um, it seems like everything on there is positively proportionate to the needs of the community, um, whether it be you know what's going on in 
the very now present with the police officers getting their, their body cameras just to make sure that they're safe as well as the community. And um, what you're doing with the development of the town. Um, I do like that um, when I think Mr. Litzenberg had spoken and said that, you know, is this going to be beyond just the Main and North Street you agreed? And I think that's important mm -hmm. for the We Are Elkton model to include all of the 21921. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just very happy with, you know, the proposed numbers. I think <coughs> the efficiency of what you're taking from the rainy day fund with what's been historically put back is hopefully going to be sufficient, especially with the new businesses you're bringing in. Oh, thank you, thank and you. I hope you guys support the budget. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything to say tonight about the public hearing on the budget? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed at five minutes to eight. And uh, do we have a motion to accept the fiscal year 2016 budget for introduction? So moved. So we got a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion about the budget itself for introduction? Hearing yeah, none. Uh, um, I just need, with uh, my first budget, uh, just need clarification as far as two weeks from now we vote the one either accepting, changing. In the interim, there are changes that, that are and can be made. This is only introductory or an introduction of your budget. Um, is this where I ask questions about your, your budget before I vote on it, or is that, do I wait for my uh, my comments later on as far as uh, my in, report? That, that's a good point. Uh, it's it's only for the introduction point. Uh, if there's comments you want to make so that I'm aware of what your concerns are, I'm happy to hear them. And, uh, or you can just wait until the night of the budget to accept it. But that won't give us much time to address them. So I'll think address them. I'll address them now if you want. Yeah, I think so. Go ahead and address them. Uh, the EDC. Let me start there. Good evening, everybody. Here you go. Can you hear me now, sir? Thank you. Uh, with the EDC, uh, the, the extra money that's being generated, if we're giving a hundred hundred thousand to the alliance, and we're keeping a hundred in a slush fund, then the extra money that they make on uh, uh, the parades or anything like that. Do does that money come back to the town, or does the alliance keep that money? That would go. That would continue to stay into their fund, into their budget. Um, and then, if we're using 1.7 projection, is 1.7 million dollars of the general fund. And I do appreciate the same thing that Danielle said and a couple other people as far as the breakdown of the money that the town has. Um, with that uh, $16 million or whatever the case may be. The only part of it that we're allowed to use though, uh, from like the water fund, the sewage fund, are strictly on those things. The rest of the general fund is where we pull most of our money to pay our bills. That's correct? correct. So if we have, hopefully, your number is wrong and actually we're gonna get, we'll have 4.7 million is my calculation instead of 4.4. .4. Uh, if we use the 1.7, that leaves us with 300 or $3 million. Uh, what is your projection next year's budget uh, with the increases of salary, the increases of benefits? Uh, I see some capital investments that we're not going to have to do again, like some of the dump trucks and some of the, some of the uh, uh, not six police cars, but probably four or three, somewhere in that area. What is the projection of, of general fund money being pulled then? It's a very good, good question. And uh, currently the... Uh, Elton area is the area, the town of Elton is in the assessment side. Uh, I hate to tell you this, but there will be an assessment increase from the county uh, for any town of Elton resident. Uh, it's going on right now. And uh, projections across the state have been anywhere from 3.5% to as high as 13% for increased assessments of properties. Uh, I feel very strongly they're going to go up, so let's take a conservative number and say that we get uh, a three or four percent uh, increase uh, on our on our uh, uh, taxable uh, base. Uh, we have one billion four hundred million dollars of as a taxable base, which throws it into about uh, another three hundred four hundred thousand dollars to the plus. Uh, we'll also be able to receive additional amounts in the personal property tax. Uh, it's still going to show at that point that we're going to probably be 
if we don't buy any capital equipment next year, we're going to still be probably three to four hundred thousand dollars short that we would have to pull from the uh, rainy day fund per se. Uh, the goal is, of course, to get to where our expenditures are exact same as our revenues. Sure. And uh, that is our goal. And uh, we got, you know, I, I use the word hope a lot, but we have to hope that this Fairfield Inn is going to be under construction and built. We've got to hope that the Wawa, who is picking up their permit, as we they actually picked up their permit to start the construction, that that revenues, those revenues are going to help uh, get to that deficit that we have. We need more. I'm not going to get here and tell you that we're not going to need more, and I do project that we're going to have to pull from the uh, rainy day fund. And once we get to that point of our expenditures equal in our revenues, I believe that we have taxed our, our taxpayers too much money. I continue to say that. We shouldn't have this amount of money in our rainy day fund. And uh, when we have this amount of money, I think right now the state is uh, suggesting, at one time they suggested 25%, and I think now the norm is 15%. So my goal is to keep the rainy day fund always around 15%, and we're still well within that number. I think we're still at 22 or 23%. I know we're at, actually, we, uh, at four million, we're still at 33% of the rainy day fund. So I hope that, I do have a plan, what the, is, goal is, the, okay. goal is, the goal is to get it to where our expenditures and our revenues are the same. I can absolutely uh, sit here and tell everyone tonight that we will have to pull from the rainy day fund next year. And uh, I believe in uh, year three we won't have to do it anymore. So your timeline is year three? Year three. All right. Um, in grinding the sidewalks, who's going to oversee that? Um, it was $35. It was thirty-five dollars a cut, wasn't it? I would say our Department of Public Works will be overseeing that. Right. Um, who's going to oversee the EDC? The uh, you're, you're using EDC. Uh, are you? I, I'm assuming you're talking about the economic development. Uh, the alliance will be managing themselves as they've always managed themselves, but I will have a critical role in uh, making sure that we're following through. As I stated before, that if this fails, you're looking at the person that's in control of the failure. But if it succeeds, I can promise you it has to succeed. And uh, you can point all fingers at me one way or the other. <laughs> success or not success. But I, I feel strongly that uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna pull through, and then next year you're gonna say, Rob, do you need more money? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like something I would say. <laughs> uh, for Parks and Rec, uh, you, you mentioned uh, that you want to balance it, um, and you had plans. What are those plans? Uh, and I'm hesitant only because. Uh, I think uh, everyone here is aware that, uh, or everyone here at the board is aware that we are looking at a parcel of property, uh, and I can't really get into too much details about the parcel of property, but the goal is if we move forward with a rec center, uh, this rec center will be uh, a, a will be able to generate the amount of money needed to balance the parks and rec program. And uh, I wouldn't want to say any more than that until we can get the thumbs up or thumbs down from the board as a group to move forward with this. All right. And uh, out of out of uh, sheer curiosity, uh, how much did you stack the deck tonight? I did not stack the deck tonight at all. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. All in favor. Uh, I'd like to abstain. I'd like to abstain. Is that okay? Yeah, you can stay. Yep. Thank you. One, one abstention, extension, and uh, abstention, and, and four yeas. Thank you for introduction. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Mr. Mayor, uh, you're out on that order here. Yep. But you have one commissioner make comments here in reference to your budget. What about the other commissioner? 
Do I have anything to say? Yeah. Listen, we're, this is this is you can you can ask that question at the public or at the uh, public comment time. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Uh, next up, well, uh, let me. I will answer. I will answer that for you. I will answer that for you. I have received emails from my fellow commissioners and comments from my fellow commissioners about my budget. I have not received any from Commissioner Van Rienen, other than right now speaking in front of the public. Whether that's good, bad, or indifferent, but I have heard from all three of the other commissioners. They haven't brought it out, but they brought it to me. They have brought the uh, information to me. So I hope, hopefully that may have answered. But they have given me the information, their comments and questions about the budget. All right, we've got next on the agenda, we've got uh, the Locust Lane Sidewalk Feasibility Study from Will Mapko. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing great. We're going to be a couple seconds uh, doing a little bit of technical up here real quick. And I do apologize for all that want to come for the public comment portion tonight, but we're almost there. We're almost there. Thank you. Okay, are we ready? Oh, what, let's wait for DJ real quick. Yeah, they told us we could get that. Lou, should I say anything about the management change at the separate room? No. No. Are you well prepared tonight? <laughs> All right, we're ready to go. The floor is yours. I can ask everyone to quiet down a little bit so we can hear the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good evening again. Uh, my name is uh, Tamika Graham from Wilmapco, and I'm here uh, seeking adoption of the Locust Lane Sidewalk. Pull that mic up closer to you, dear. The, um, the Locust Lane Sidewalk Feasibility Study. But uh, before you move to take action, I have a, a very brief presentation. I wanted to give you all a, a recap of uh, the study and also to present the final recommendation of the study. Thank you. Um, so if you all recall, uh, Locust, uh, the sidewalk feasibility study is looking at a section of uh, Locust Lane in between East High Street and Main Street. Uh, we are doing this um, as a, a, it was based on a request from the town. Uh, we've been working with a consultant called RK and K. We are looking at uh, design standards. We've developed some uh, feasible alternatives. We have uh, preliminary cost estimates, which was a part of the scope, and you have uh, before you a final draft of the, the report. So really, uh, the main purpose here is to um, uh, provide a solution to some of the obvious problems between uh, uh, East High Street and Main Street. As you can see in the pictures, uh, the, there are a number of utility poles that impede the sidewalk. The sidewalk is um, it's only 40 inches and it doesn't have an upright curb, so that makes it uh, non-ADA compliant. Uh, so really what this project is doing is looking at some uh, feasible alternatives to, to make this uh, section of sidewalk more accessible and also uh, safe. What's wrong with the telephone poles in the middle of the sidewalk? <laughs> <laughs> it's, exactly. Uh, we, uh, touched on it there. It's, it's not necessarily that the poles are the issue. It's the uh, 
really the poles and the, the width of the sidewalk uh, is the, the, the challenge there. Uh, so we, um, I provided you a presentation uh, back in April and we talked about uh, some of these items. Uh, we looked at uh, an, uh, four different improvement measures uh, for this project. Uh, and each of these measures, they really address a particular uh, constraint within uh, the study area. The first uh, looks at um, sections of the sidewalk where we have existing walls that create a, a challenge for walking. Uh, there are some sections, uh, actually four different uh, points where the utility poles are a problem. And then there's one particular section um, in the study area that has an existing wall and the utilities. Uh, so for each of these um, examples, we have uh, an improvement measure. Um, and then the fourth is to provide passing zones. And you'll see in each of the, the options, or actually if you recall from uh, the previous presentation, that each of the options do uh, include passing zones. So those sidewalk improvement measures have been incorporated into, um, we have four different proposed alternatives. Um, these have not changed since the previous presentation, but I just wanted to put them up here. Uh, just a, a quick recap, the first, um, um, option is to narrow the roadway. Uh, we do have uh, a little bit of width to uh, reconfigure uh, the sidewalk to provide a, a five foot wide sidewalk, which is preferred uh, from uh, the federal agency standpoint. And each of the options would include uh, passing zones, as I just mentioned, but also uh, improvements to uh, one of the ramps that currently has a utility pole uh, impeding it, and it will include um, some crosswalks that are uh, lacking uh, along uh, Main Street. Um, the second uh, proposal is to accommodate the utilities, and that just uh, looks at how can we provide a five foot wide sidewalk without having to uh, shift back or to underground the utilities. And some of the considerations with that um, includes uh, going uh, slightly outside of the public right of way. Um, and as you can see here, um, it just summarizes um, uh, improvement measure three and four that would be incorporated. Uh, the third option is to relocate the utilities. That would be to, to shift the utilities uh, slightly back outside of the public right of way to provide the five foot wide sidewalk and also to uh, upgrade the, the cross, um, to upgrade the, um, the ramps using some of the existing driveways. 2A and 2-3, um, it's an ex simply an extension of option 2 and 3. Uh, so as I mentioned, we, we are looking at the section between uh, High Street and Main Street, uh, but in this option, it would be an extension up to, um, up to the Friendship Heights uh, community up towards Mitchell Street. The benefit with this option is that it um, completes a, a, a gap that exists further north of our original study area. And then the final option uh, is to expand uh, the sidewalk on the west side of Locust Lane. Um, however, uh, because of uh, the right-of-way is constraint, we know that uh, this is not um, an option that we would uh, pursue any further, but we wanted to show it uh, just to express that we did consider uh, this as an option. So again, those options have not changed since the, the previous presentation. Uh, but what has uh, changed slightly is the preliminary cost estimates. Um, previously, we had not um, looked at a cost estimate for um, the first option, which is to narrow the roadway, because we knew, um, just looking at it, that it would be uh, the most expensive and it would also uh, be the most uh, dis disruptive in terms of um, construction. Um, but you all had expressed, uh, this board had expressed some interest in uh, looking at the cost for uh, narrowing the roadway. And so uh, we do have a figure for that. We also uh, refined the figures for uh, options uh, 2, 2, 3, 2, A, and 2, 2, 3, 2, A, and 3, A. Um, and uh, those figures mainly changed um, because we'd um, previously we were using some uh, figures from other sidewalk projects that have been conducted in Maryland. Uh, but these current figures actually reflect, reflect SHA's um, unit costs um, that was updated in January of uh, 2015. Uh, the cost estimates again do not include um, 
the, the cost to relocate the utility poles. It doesn't include the easements. Um, since our last uh, meeting, we did try, uh, we did, um, uh, myself and uh, Public uh, Works, we did try to reach out to the utility companies to try uh, and get a cost estimate for what uh, the cost uh, would, it, would entail to, to relocate the utilities. Uh, I did follow up with them again this week and they said that they have begun to gather some information about uh, the location of the project, but they would have to do a, a site visit um, and they would uh, hopefully get back to the town uh, sometime in the near future. Uh, how, oh, go back, one more, it's okay. Um, however, um, our final recommendation for the study is for the town to pursue option one, which is to accommodate the utilities. Um, this chart just summarizes which uh, ones we would recommend, and we would also recommend to extend uh, the project in, uh, north of High Street that would connect into uh, the Locust Lane East High Street TAP project that's currently underway. So um, together, these two projects would connect two neighborhoods in the downtown. Um, this option would uh, fully uh, meet the goals of the project, which is to improve accessibility and uh, safety, and also to uh, improve the pedestrian network in the town in general. Uh, we did look at uh, some evaluation criteria um, before we made this recommendation. Uh, part of that also included um, public input. We did have a public workshop uh, last month. It was actually held uh, before, uh, it was a two hour open house workshop that was held prior to uh, the town meeting. Uh, we did not have anyone that opposed the project um, and there was uh, no opposition to any of the, um, the options. Um, so, that, was, that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you, even if this is a feasibility study and proposal, did you talk to any of the residents on that street during your um, study and w did you get any feedback from any of them? Uh, we sent out a direct mailing to all the affected property owners along uh, the study area and we also uh, included uh, all the residents within uh, the surrounding area. Um, we only had uh, five people actually showed up. We did have um, some people uh, some residents uh, directly in that block that did reach out to uh, the town and myself. Uh, we answered their questions. Uh, they uh, they felt comfortable once their questions were answered with the project. Uh, some of the concerns, well, one of the concerns was uh, with option uh, one to narrow the roadway. There were some concerns about um, having uh, vehicles <coughs> being, able to, be, being able to turn on a roadway that's already narrow. Uh, but one of the things that we would uh, look at is the, the, the radius of the, the corner curve. So that was something that would be addressed. One of the current mm -hmm. concerns were, I know there's at least three driveways that are, are, are questionable about doing any work. Um, it's hard for them to go up in their driveways and come out safely. And that's one of the reasons I've asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, unless they're involved with the meetings and there was some kind of special letter given to them knowing that this work is being taking place. A lot of people don't ask questions where a person's doing a survey, but I want to make sure that they are fully aware of what's going on mm -hmm. before anything else takes place with that. Right. Yeah, uh, well, the, um, again, the option that we're recommending, it, it won't have any, um, the only um, work that would take place with the driveways is just making it ADA compliant, so it has to be a 2% slope with the adjacent uh, part of the sidewalk, so that's really the only uh, work that will be done with the driveways with the, accom with the option to accommodate the utilities. Uh, so our next step uh, uh, for the town is uh, to pursue funding to implement the project, and uh, the town has actually already uh, taken a step to do that. Um, this, uh, the town submitted a submission for uh, the Transportation Alternatives Program, uh, which is currently funding uh, the other project uh, that's in the same area. So, um, so uh, just looking back quickly on uh, where we've been and where we are now, um, this project, uh, we've had a number of uh, project meetings. Uh, 
as I mentioned before, we had a presentation to this board uh, because it is a, a study funded through uh, the WOMACO budget. It, it typically goes through our process, which is through our technical advisory committee as well as our non-motorized committee. Uh, so there have been a number of uh, professionals looking into uh, this uh, feasibility study. Again, I'm here today seeking adoption of it and it will uh, go before our council for an endorsement and they would just support the action that this board has taken this evening. I will entertain any questions. You answered them. Uh, the only comment that I, I had before was would it make sense to relocate those lines and of course we, we know that uh, the cost of that could be uh, very high but uh, I had spoke to Linda Burris and I'm working on that side of it. She's our representative with Delmarva and she said there may be an opportunity that they may partner with us in that side of it. So okay. that's something I want to make you aware that mm -hmm. there's an option there for us, but mm -hmm. until we get a no uh, from them, then uh, I think we would, we would go with the recommendation. Mm -hmm. and, one of the polls was uh, Delmarva Power, but the other three or four were Verizon. No, oh, is that right? Yeah, that's okay, then yeah. that changes the whole game there. Yeah. Any uh, comments from the board? Yuri Mudd, thank you so much for bringing that into us tonight. Do you, do you need a recommend? You need yes. a recommendation, right? Uh, do we have a motion to approve the plan as presented? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, you can ask. Do we have a motion? We've got a motion. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? Go ahead, or you got. Uh, no, I just wanted to ask Jamie uh, if it has a. Uh, the zoning been involved with the planning and yes, everything? Yes, as a matter of fact, the, um, this project uh, was actually presented to Wilmaco, requested <coughs> assistance, assistance from Wilmaco to do this study through their UPWP, Unified Planning Work Program. Yes. So this is a $10,000 study that Wilmaco provided to the town yes. as a grant, as a, in the form of, I guess, a grant, um, in-house work. And so I myself and KCI Public Works have all been working closely with Wilmaco on this project. Okay, I just want to make sure. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right, very good. We got uh, a couple proclamations. The first proclamation is for the Elton High School graduation day, whereas Elton High School at its present location was dedicated in 1958, and whereas the first graduation ceremony was held in 1959, and whereas for 56 years the teachers and staff of Elton <coughs> High have served our community preparing students to become productive adults, and whereas former students, now parents and grandparents themselves, watch with pride as their children and grandchildren take their next steps into the world. Now therefore, the mayor and commissioners of the town of Elton do hereby proclaim June 12, 2015, Elton High School Graduation Day. Do we have a motion to accept this proclamation? Second. And a second? Second. Any discussion on the proclamation? All in favor, aye. aye. All right. Our second proclamation, uh, and I'll talk about this after we read the proclamation. Uh, this is actually a certificate of recognition for Mr. William Hoppy Hammond. Ooh. Whereas William Hoppy Hammond's daily walking routine includes a stop at the bridge at Route 213, where he shares his enthusiasm for life by sharing a smile and a friendly wave to passing motorists. And whereas drivers and passerbyers have made him an important part of the day, looking forward to seeing him at his post, and whereas Hoppy demonstrates that one person can make a difference in another's day, simply with a smile and a friendly wave. Now, therefore, the mayor and commissioners of Elton hereby proclaim June 5th, 2015 as Hoppy Hammond Day. Do we have a motion to accept? We have a second. Any discussion on the uh, proclamation? I want to say that uh, uh, in this on Friday at 4 o'clock, uh, Commissioner Gibbons will, is that correct? You're going to bring him to the bridge? I'm going to bring him to the bridge. All right. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Gibbons is going to bring him to the bridge on, on uh, certainly on Bridge Street. Uh, we're going to unveil a, a plaque for uh, Hoppy as our ambassador of the town of Elton. 
And I welcome everyone here that's in this room tonight to come and wave with us on the bridge. And we're all going to be part of the Hoppy Wave that day. He is not here. He is not here. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Yeah, it was in the yeah, yeah. Lou, you're on. Nothing. Okay, very good. On my report, uh, we we have a uh, we have a uh, vacancy on the board of appeals, and uh, on that uh, vacancy, I'm going to ask the board to uh, give me some names of, uh, to fill a position on the board of appeals. We'll go through the same process we did, but we currently have an alternate, and the reason why you have an alternate on the board is so that when a member uh, is no longer a member, you move forward and appoint that alternate in that position. And I'd like to ask the, the town to approve Jim Cooney uh, for moving from the alternate member to a permanent member of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Do I have a motion to approve that? So moved. We have a second? Second. Any discussion on Jim Cooney uh, taking over as a full-time member instead of an alternate? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Jim, I see you back here in the background. Thank you for serving. And just because Jim has the same hairline as a couple of us up here doesn't mean we're related. Okay, uh, the Relay for Life update. Uh, a couple weeks ago I, I uh, challenged uh, uh, Cheney Richardson, uh, in, in, who's our receptionist at uh, Town Hall, to uh, help put a team in uh, for the town of Elton. We got in at the last minute, which was about maybe three weeks prior to the event. But the We Are Elton team, we put a team in. We had a goal of $1,000. Uh, we all participated in it. And to make a long story short, the town of Elton raised $2,324. <laughs> All right, we got another hundred and something dollars added to that total. But what a wonderful evening it was, and uh, uh, our goal next year, uh, we finished in the top ten. Next year our goal was to finish in the top five. Uh, this is going to be an event that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show with a lot of passion. I know we have uh, folks that get emotional and passionate about their calls. This is going to be one call that I'm going to be really involved in for the Relay for Life, and I want all of our uh, community, I'm going to ask everyone to get involved in this, and let's, uh, I think ATK won this, so we're going to beat them uh, beat them out. So that's our goal, and we want to raise money for uh, cancer awareness and, and, and uh, uh, for folks that uh, I think that disease has touched probably everyone in this room to one degree or another. Alrighty, uh, let's see. Uh, I wanted to mention that the, uh, there's a at the Historical Society uh, celebration, which is on it's this Saturday, or yes. it's this Saturday, June 6th, is going to be celebrating Cecil County's 341st anniversary of being a county. So uh, hopefully, uh, maybe some members can uh, join the uh, town of Elton uh, and help celebrate in the county uh, for the 341st birthday. I will be there. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, also the uh, town of Elton uh, received today uh, the Elton Police Department has been nominated by the Comptroller of Maryland to receive the William Donald Chaffer's Lifetime Commitment Award of Helping People. This is a, a great honor. be in Elton on Friday, June 26th at 12.30 to present this fine, fantastic award to the Elton Police Department, and I hope that uh, all can attend. What time? Uh, that will be at 12.30, and uh, it's the uh, award for uh, our police department. It was a uh, uh, fantastic award. So, Chief, I know you're doing some fantastic things. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, I mentioned about the uh, creation of jobs at Truma Medical. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, within the next 30 days, uh, they will be recruiting 20 new positions, uh, a mix of mostly production and support staff. So if anyone knows of anyone that's looking for work in that field, 
I would go to Trumo. They're going to be hiring the first 20 here within the next couple weeks. So uh, that's some uh, good news. So I think I mentioned 100, but it could be as many as a, what's it? It's in, it's in addition to in addition to, yes. So it was actually 120 total jobs. So, Mayor, I'm working on that 200. So we're at 120. Uh, Lou, where do we stand at in regards to the ordinance on the neighborhood uh, or the uh, uh, Elton Guarantee Program? I started it, but uh, I haven't concluded it yet. Okay. Is there any questions or concerns that you have at this point in regards to it? Okay, thank you. Uh, a couple more things uh, that I had here. Uh, Gene Minner and myself have been working, uh, actually Gene more, more so than me, uh, on the mitigation uh, uh, grants. And uh, one of the goals that I have uh, for, for our town is any properties that are currently in the floodway, floodplain, that uh, would like to see if they can be bought out, quite frankly. Uh, we're working on that funding source to make some of those things happen. And uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of properties on Bridge Street that would absolutely qualify. Uh, and uh, I would love for every one of them to qualify and want to be part of this, because that would open up a beautiful uh, scenic walk area between downtown and to our Big Elk Mall. So, I'm encouraging uh, all those parties to participate in that, and we would help those businesses relocate uh, to another location here in our town. Uh, the historical society thing that I should have mentioned was at 2 o'clock, uh, right before the Belmont race, so everyone can attend the historical celebration and then make their way that way. Uh, I received uh, a couple comments about the... Uh, uh, loan program, uh, and I, I have to make everyone aware of this. I had uh, one resident that was not in favor of the $200,000 for economic development and also did, was not supportive of the uh, uh, guarantee program. So I wanted to make everyone aware I did receive an email of non-support for both of those programs. But I also received uh, support from uh, uh, an uh, Former Mayor Larry Truslow of Northeast uh, actually stated that this was something that the town of Northeast did uh, during his term of mayor, so I just wanted to make sure everyone knew this wasn't nothing new that was going on. So I wanted to get that comment in, uh, mm -hmm. but that was a uh, message that he sent to me. Uh, I'm not sure of any of the details of that program back then, but uh, it was sent to me from him. Uh, along with that, I want to go ahead and, and I'm going to give the, uh, uh, certainly when we open up the floor to the public to talk about the, the town's uh, position and, and what had happened in regards to uh, our feral cats, uh, you'll have an opportunity to speak. But why, why I have the floor, I just wanted to uh, uh, make everyone aware of uh, what I believe has, has really went from something that to me was very small and it's really grown to a, a uh, uh, what appears to be, I guess in a lot of people's eyes, a crisis. Uh, I want to make it very clear, the town of Elton has never killed a cat, we never murder cats, and that's a fact. We've never done that. And I'm, a, I'm quite frankly, I'm embarrassed for anyone to even look at this board up here and say to us that we have killed cats and murdered cats. I'm embarrassed by that. Uh, that has never happened. But along with that, I want to stress that our agreement, let's take all that away, but I also want to say that uh, the town of Elton had a resident of the town. And I want to stress that our number one priority to our residents of our town of Elton is their public health and welfare is all of our number one priority. We had a resident of our town, one resident. Uh, we have actually had, I guess in the past, other residents that have came to the town of Elton and said, listen, I've got, I've got some cats in, our, in, in the area. Uh, I don't want them. I don't want them in my area. What can you do to help? I will tell you that the town of Elton did what we would have done for any resident of our town. Our first call was to the, the agency that the county government has contracted to help take care of pets. So we contacted the Buddy for Life. In fact, 
Our president contacted the Buddies for Life first, and they said they don't take cats. We contacted the Buddies for Life, and we were told, yeah, we do take cats, but we're full at this point. Uh, so our resident came back, still had the same uh, uh, concerns and issues. Uh, we discussed it. Uh, I asked uh, the customer, or our resident, are you feeding the cats? You know, you're, they're your cats. After you feed them for a couple days, you're, you're the one responsible for the cats. And uh, he said, yes, I'm feeding them. And uh, so we figured we needed a second, another way to, if this happened again, what are we supposed to do? And I can tell you, we looked at a lot of different programs. We looked at uh, uh, the TNR program. Uh, we looked at the, uh, from a, a trap, neuter, return, to a trap, neuter, repair, or, or uh, relocate, to uh, all these different uh, uh, scenarios. We were well educated on this. We tasked our town administrator to take a look at this for us. His, under his recommendation, and we all agreed here at the board, that we were going to take, our first call was going to be to the Buddies for Life. First and foremost call was the Buddies for Life. Our second call, if Buddies for Life couldn't take it, we were going to call the Eastern, Eastern Shore Animal Rescue. This Eastern Shore Animal Rescue Facility. That was our second call. Uh, our agreement in our terms, which no one out here certainly knew what our agreement was, was for them to, for us to capture the cat, uh, take it to them, and if it was a, uh, we were told that if it was uh, any way they could adopt that animal, it would be adopted. Uh, we weren't doing the killing. Now you may say, okay, well you guys trapped it and you took it there, you're going to do the killing of that animal. Uh, that was our direction, and the reason why we were going that way is that was a isolated incident from a resident asking us to take action. The town of Elton has no desire to trap cats in our community. We will not trap colonies of cats and, and uh, uh, take them away uh, from anyone else there, there may be. Uh, it's just not what we're going to do. We've never done it. Uh, that's not our goal. That's not our direction. Our direction was we were helping a resident of our town that did not want us to trap, neuter, and return it back to him. That was the bottom line. Now, since all this has happened, we have educated ourselves a little bit better. I can tell you, we have educated ourselves. Uh, I spoke to a, a, a couple great people that said they would, uh, if we could trap it, neuter it, uh, they would relocate it and try to get it into another colony for us. Well, that's, I'm, I'm satisfied with that, but I'm not sure if that's the same thing with the plan that uh, wants to be put in place with us. But I also want to stress an agreement is when both parties sign the agreement. I am happy, or not necessarily happy to say, but the agreement was never signed. The town of Elton has no agreement with the Eastern Shore, Eastern Shore Animal. We do not have an agreement. So there is no agreement, and it's not an agreement to it was signed. So there is none, and I can tell you that they don't want to be part of this neither. So there is no agreement. Uh, I, I kind of apologize that everyone's here to hear that, but uh, uh, we were without a program. Not to say that uh, I don't think that anyone on this board would be uh, willing to make any agreements on which direction we go here in the future, uh, but I think we have been educated. Uh, we've uh, uh, looked at all the plans in place, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, uh, I know more about cats today than I've ever done in my life, and, and I thank everyone for that. I really do. And uh, so I wanted to uh, get that out there under my business, and everyone's going to have an opportunity to say a few words about this when we get to the public comment time. But I want to stress, there is no agreement with the Eastern Shore Group, uh, and uh, there's uh, no action from the town of Elton in killing or murdering cats. And uh, I, I can tell you, I don't know how many times I've been threatened, quite frankly, over the last uh, week from uh, some emails. Uh, I have, uh, I received uh, probably a total of uh, 26 to 30 emails. And I think that uh, out of all those, there may have been one from the town of Elton. Uh, so social media does a great job of getting the message out, but where it, where it starts at is here. And I'm glad to see a lot of people here tonight. And I hope that there is residents from the town of Elton that want to talk about the, the program. 
uh, quite frankly. Uh, with that, Mary Jo, you're on. Well, I know a lot of people have a lot to say, so I'm going to be brief. I just want to thank everyone out there um, who volunteered, because I see several, several of you here, for the color vibe that happened last week, and it was a great event. Um, I thought I'd have the final count for tonight, but there were so many that registered that day, he didn't have it to me by today. We're looking at about 2,800 people right now, and um, it is on for next year, so I just want to thank all the volunteers and everyone involved to make that a success, to bring people to our town. And that's all I have, so everyone could have their chance. Thank you. Earl. I'll speak on behalf of the um, Parks and Rec 4th of July. I want everybody to be, uh, get yourself prepared for 4th of July coming up, um, which will be held down at Meadow Park. Uh, summer camp will start um, on June the 15th, so if you haven't registered your child to, for the uh, summer camp, please do so to uh, go to Parks and Rec and register, register them. And then basketball camp will start 7, 16, July the 16th through uh, July the 13th. That's Monday through Thursday um, from 8 to 12. Um, and they want me to remind everyone that dance, ca uh, dance camps will be gone through the whole summer. So if you want to register your child for dance uh, camp, um, they're open for registration. Um, also, when I have the floor, I just want to make my stake on the uh, cat situation. I have responded to about maybe six phone calls um, I don't get into the social media stuff because I teach my kids that I'm always on there all day and night that sometimes you say something that might come back the wrong way so I don't do that. So people that I did talk to about this situation knows where I stand with my vote on this. Basically uh, like um, uh, the mayor stated that our concern was to try to find a place for the cats. Um, nothing to do with uh, euthanizing them but yet find a home for them get someone that does that work, which I don't have that um, capability and not knowledge, but like uh, the mayor said, I learned more about cats this month than I think I've ever, ever heard. Um, and uh, uh, one thing I will say that um, I'm glad to see so many people here um, that have uh, the, the care and the concern for the cats, and uh, I hope we can come up with a good solution so we can help both the cats and the people. Thank you, Charles. Again, I want to thank the uh, administration for attending Elton High School on last Thursday. Uh, we went to Elton High School. We talked to an AP class, uh, first period or first block. We returned. We uh, talked to the ninth graders, uh, the last block, and basically we gave them an overture of Elton Town government. It was well received, and again, uh, we did a good job on part of uh, the town of Elton. And Mayor, I want to thank you for the budget that you presented. It was very thorough and very extensive. And uh, uh, so you put some time, and of course, there's going to be some questions before it's voted upon, but thank you anyway. Uh, the cat situation, uh, glad to see so many people here to, I guess, to give a response. Obviously, we don't know what direction we're going to take. Certainly, it's always good to have uh, some external communication to give us. Michelle, I want to thank you because even though there was a misconception, and we're not here every day. You stood instead for us while we were absent. You also went to the media and explained what had happened. It was a misconception, and hopefully tonight we can come to some type of resolve. And that's it. Thank you. PJ, uh, let me start with the, the cat situation first. Uh, and, and I am also excited to see everybody here. Um, we're all passionate about animals and, and obviously it was a, a situation that was presented to us and um, I for myself wasn't aware of, of TNR and, and the other TNR and, and oh my god so many different things that, that you can do um, and immediately I am on social media and uh, immediately I, I was uh, I was encouraged <laughs> in a very uh, aggressive manner to communicate with some people. And um, I'm very thankful of that because uh, I took the time to, to go and visit some people, go talk to some people, ask people to, to mail things to me, to email things to me, and I responded. And um, 
And, and for me, uh, that, that's, that's what I, I, I asked to do as an elected official. I did get a, uh, uh, a letter, and I'm not going to say who it's from because I didn't ask to, to break their anonymity, uh, but they are uh, a caregiver of, of two cats called Stumpy and Batman. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, those cats will be just fine. Uh, and if anybody follows me on social media, uh, they know exactly where I stand, that, that along with the rest of the board, that we're not looking to, to exterminate or eradicate any type of colonies. It's just not in, in, in any of us. Um, so uh, the, the next thing I'd like to talk about is, is today, I, we all, um, and it was extremely encouraging, uh, thought-provoking, uh, was a homeless coalition uh, that happened today. And there was, a, the mayor arranged it, um, the, the whole board was there, Lewis was there, uh, um, lieutenants and, and, and police chief, and uh, pillars of the community uh, were there to talk about the issue that we have with homeless. And uh, it was about an hour long. Uh, there was, there was some, some great discussion, I thought, of, of uh, some encouraging ways uh, that we can help the homeless, help businesses, taxpayers um, with this situation. Um, and, and, and I'm not sure when the next meeting is going to be. I had to leave early because I had another meeting. There was, no there was none assigned. Hopefully within the next month, I would assume, right? Once a month. Um, and then we'll be able to report back to you of exactly what's going on. Um, but it was, uh, like I said, the, the amount of people that turned out, and, and, and there were some people that, that did not see eye to eye, uh, but I think everybody was in agreement that as long as we can agree somewhere around 80%, uh, that, that we can definitely move forward and, and hopefully take care of this thing. Um, also wanted to say, uh, the mayor brought up that I didn't send him any emails, and uh, the reason I didn't do that is, is anything that I want to do and say I, I want it to be as transparent as possible. Uh, has nothing to do with, with my peers or anything like that at all. It's just my personal belief. Uh, just like the emails I send back and, back and forth, there is no disclaimer at the bottom of my emails that this is private information. Uh, if I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it out loud, I'm going to say it to you. Um, and I'd like to know where my peers stand, because I, I, I honestly don't know. I, I was here in last year's um, uh, 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 talk about the budget with, with former Mayor Fasano, and I know that there was uh, some apprehension about adopting his budget, and I don't know why, um, but I would like to know where, where, uh, where everybody stands. Um, and as far as the ordinance for uh, uh, the, the um, uh, guarantee program, Lewis, the, uh, an ordinance is being developed right now, but as a board, don't we have a say in what that ordinance is supposed to say? If you give me uh, your input into it, I certainly would. Okay. I can't tell you what to say, though. I can only. I, I understand that. I guess I, I didn't even know an ordinance was being developed. Speak up. Sorry, I didn't know that an ordinance was being developed. No, it's following your brochure, so to speak. Yeah, Lewis, uh, what I wanted to do was to create a. a uh, uh, we need to get something on paper. And uh, once that gets on the paper, then that will give us all an opportunity to tweak it in any manner that we would want to tweak it. Uh, until we get it on paper, I could get here and uh, until you can see the uh, plan per se, uh, I, all, I, all I can do is talk about it. So I instructed Lewis to uh, move forward with uh, a, draft. a draft for us to uh, take a look at. All right. And uh, I saw the initial uh, report on the water study. When are, when are we all meeting? August workshop. August workshop? All right, can that report? Um, Be the second meeting in August. The second one in August. All right, so that is. August the 12th. All right. All right, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, DJ. Yep. Uh, there was two things that I had uh, forgot to mention during my report. Uh, we. Public Works just received the seven bike racks, so we're going to be putting bike racks throughout the town. And also, uh, we had the pre meeting yesterday on the road restoration program, so there's some roads being identified, we've already identified those, so uh, that's moving forward, and I think we had quite a few people take a look at that. Very good. All righty, I've got a whole list of people that would like to say a few words tonight. And uh, I, I'd ask to keep it fairly brief if you could. Uh, once again, I'll never cut anyone off, but uh, 
when we when we most of the uh, discussion is about TNR and uh, I think once we hear it once I don't think we need to hear it again you can either say yeah you're in favor or not in favor or whatever it may be but first we got uh, Pat Pat Bruch and Patty Barton are you coming on down or did they leave no I'm here oh. Patty left but I'm here all right come on down 205 West Pulaski Highway and there is some seats up front if anyone would like to sit down Hey, Patty, could you turn that mic like this? Sure. Directional, thank you. And I would have, uh, I'm glad you came up because we are having the cleanup at uh, Hollinsworth Manor on Cow Lane on Saturday starting at what time? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Sure. and I will be there at 9 a.m. That's wonderful to and hear. I, I will also I like my hot dogs there. well done. No problem. I'll right. make sure that they're broken nice and left for you all right? right very good okay so with that said we're making progress on that um why i'm here today is um first of all i want to say thank you to the mayor um i messaged you that i needed to know the progress on the homeless um because i was having severe issues in the back and um i got a response in about 45 minutes and an officer walked in and he's back there and he smiled at me and he said did you make a phone call i said uh no but he had told me chief had sent him out and then the next day a tenant came to me and chief was out back they said oh there's a police officer down there with a white shirt on i said okay that's chief i for the last several days have since they've been out there on a constant basis we have no problems back there they're gone they don't come near my buildings and it's been awesome for the children there for the tenants there it's really changing it's making a wonderful difference and i really appreciate the officer in the back i don't really know his name but he's awesome Sergeant and Sergeant Sergeant Joppy. Joppy. Oh, you gotta love that guy. We do love it. <laughs> and thank you for Chief for coming down to the project itself and looking it over and taking care of it with his officers. And thank you to you for following up on my message. Thank you. Um, I wasn't really trying to be ignorant or anything. I, I was just wanting to know what the progress was. Um, other than that, we're moving forward at West End Gardens and um, also at Hollingsworth Manor. We're trying to clean up the best we can. I've been working with the police departments, the state police, the sheriffs, and anyone else that I can work with. And if somebody doesn't like it, they can come visit me at West End Gardens because we need to clean up our neighborhoods. Very good. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're having a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of April 1st. Ma'am, I'm the one who started the petition. I went by what I read in the Cecil Wick, and it upset me immensely. I'm the crazy cat lady on the corner, that's what they call me. I feed yeah, three colonies. Right <laughs> Can you pull that a little closer to you? Thank you. I feed three, three colonies of cats all around Lakeside. Um, Chesapeake Feline Association gets grants, and they got a grant for 15 cats, so they thought of me, took all the cats, caught them neutered them, returned them. We don't have any mice problem anymore. The cats are feral, they won't let you pet them, but they're there and the kids are happy. So it's been a successful program. Very successful Very and good. I highly recommend um, Dr. Carletti and Chesapeake Feline Association and A Buddy for Life. So if you wanna look into those three, I mean, they, they've been wonderful. I wanna apologize that I got some feedback from Hollywood on you guys. I didn't mean I to. I thought they would be here. I was looking for the mortgage with you. I didn't mean me? to. I didn't mean for it to go that far. I got over 3,000 signatures, and uh, it just shows that there's more than one crazy cat lady. In Listen, I family. applaud you for your passion, <laughs> and I do applaud you for getting that going. And. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's great that you have that passion behind you to make things like that happen. And it shows you the power of social media and how quickly it can yeah. go. <laughs> uh, good, bad, or indifferent, 
And I'm not saying that this was bad. The only thing that I continue to say, I was getting calls from that and emails. Uh, I want to stress, none of these members of the board or anyone in the town that I'm aware of has ever killed a cat, and I'm certainly not a murderer. Again, and I said I went by what the Cecil Wig said, and, you know, we read what we want to read. I understand. And I apologize that okay. y'all got feedback from the Barbie Twins and Ken Wall. <laughs> but that being said, the... Uh, Bon Cole was the one who came up with the idea to start the petition, so I just want to give kudos to her. All right, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, Kayla. Excuse me. I just want to add, cats' lives matter. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and, and you know, this is actually good. I want to mention that we are on video here tonight, oh, and Lord. everyone yeah. can uh, look at this uh, across the country also. If you want to take this link after we are done, you can send it across also. Uh, Kayla Cristino, is she here? All right, along, oh, she's with Alley Cats. And you came all the way from Gatorsburg. Wow. Thank you. Um, so I do work with Alley Cat Allies. We are a national organization, but right in your backyard. and. Part of my job is to work with municipalities to make more effective programs to deal with the community cat population. What I hope to do in this short amount of time, I know you guys are all pros it sounds like, but give you some insight as to what the most effective program would be. Um, like you said, to make both better for the cats as well as the community. So trap to return is what we advocate for. This is a system where cats already living outdoors are humanely trapped, taken to a veterinarian to be spayed or neutered, vaccinated, and returned to their outdoor home. As of right now, this is the only effective way to stabilize and in here reduce the cat population. If you don't like cats, if you're concerned about rabies, if you're concerned about wildlife, the answer to that is all the same. You want less cats, and trap me to return is the only way to accomplish that. The thing that I want to point out is when we talk about TNR, we're talking about the cats already living outdoors. So we have to think of a solution that's going to be most successful for those cats. And once TNR is in place, they're now vaccinated and safe members of the community, as well as no more kittens, which is fabulous. <laughs> if anyone has colonies, they don't like to see kittens. Um, I wanted to touch on catching and removing because I know that was definitely um, something that was spoken about. Um, and the reason that that's not a sustainable approach is it's, there's scientific studies known as the vacuum effect. It's studied in all mammals, including cats. If you have an area where feral cat populations thrive, um, that means that there are resources there. If you permanently remove that population, cats from neighboring colonies move in. They are very quick breeders and they quickly breed to capacity. So it's pretty much an evolving door. Um, the only way catch and remove would work is if you had a large army to catch every single cat in one string. Um, so while, you know, it might be a temporary solution for certain individuals, it's not long term. Um, now, I do want to address nuisance complaints. Not everyone wants cats in their yards or their businesses, and that's certainly understandable. Um, I brought a bunch of these brochures with me. I'm happy to give them to anyone in this room who has problems with cats. These are deterrents. These will keep cats out of your yard or your place of business, um, and you will be cat free. If you go the other approach and remove cats from a person's home or a person's business, that area, for one reason or another, whether you have neighbors feeding or they just really like your yard, is a resource for those cats. So within at least six months, probably sooner, you will have a new cat there. So the calls are going to just essentially keep evolving, um, going back to the vacuum effect. Um, what I want to stress is that I understand you have to take precaution and listen to your residents. Um, but I don't want to take away from the long-term goal. The long-term goal, even for caregivers, is to stabilize and reduce the population. The only way to do that is TNR, and you can use that in combination with helping those people who do not want cats in their yard by using humane deterrence. So you can kind of help both ways, but long-term, you're going to better the population. Um, 
We are a short distance from you. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you want to pick my brain, I would be happy to talk with anyone. Um, this is near and dear to my heart as I came from a community that was doing catch and remove and I'll tell you it's, it doesn't work and you're going to want to pull your hair out if you try to make that a policy. So I hope that you do um, adopt a trap meter return program. I know you have wonderful people here willing to help and I'm here as a tool if you need any materials or anything at all. Um, we're right around the corner so thank you. Thank you so much for thank coming up. What community was I from? Yes. Wicomico by Ocean City, Maryland. I used to work at the shelter there. She sent us a packet. Yes. You, everyone has one? Yeah, okay. I have this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Ricky Lewis, Cat Crusaders, Perryville. Come on down. Commissioners, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to speak tonight. Um, my name is Ricky Lewis, and uh, I'm the director of Cat Crusaders Incorporated. Um, before I start, I'd like to give you a little bit of a background on who we are and kind of what we do for your community. Um, we're a community aid organization who works with members of the community uh, and nonprofits to provide trap new return services to the people of Cecil County and Elkton. In addition, we offer assistance with pet food, low cost spay neuter, transport for shelter transfers, and assistance with placing adoptable pets. Um, we're not a shelter, but we are a small network of foster homes. Um, we, along with other volunteers from various organizations, have been doing these things in your town now for about six years. The reason I'm here tonight is to talk about what we do when we conduct TNR in Elton. Our current program for community cat assistance usually starts with a referral from a local shelter or a friend in the community, either myself or Deb McQuaid will receive a call or a message from someone who has been feeding a cat or a group of cats but has nowhere to turn for assistance when it comes to low cost spay and neuter or they may be afraid to reach out to an animal control entity for fear that the animal will be trapped and euthanized or they may even receive a fine as a result of the animals. So um, one of the first things we do um, when we touch base with these individuals is we first assure them that we're there to help first and foremost um, and we're not going to harm the cats. Um, we go into the situation with the intent on helping that person to not only spay and neuter but vaccinate in order to be in compliance with county law and reduce any risk of rabies throughout the community. We meet with the property owners and explain to them the procedures in trapping and handling trapped animals is at this time we educate them and we let the person be part of the program. They help manage their own property in this way. By educating them, they will know what cat free production and behavior is like. And, and, and this is part of the program. This is something we provide. Um, traps are set for each, at each location and checked every few hours. Once trapped, each animal receives a rabies shot. They're dewormed, spayed or neutered, they're ear docked and given a tattoo on their left ear and they're given a shot of penicillin to help in their recovery. Animals from each colony are checked for feline aids and leukemia to make sure the colony is in fact healthy to other cats and other pets. What happens if the cat is sick? If the cat is positive for feline aids and leukemia, typically if there's no shelter that is specializes with them, in that situation, in their terminal diseases, and we do recommend euthanasia in that situation. Leukemia can be transferred from cat to cat, and um, it shouldn't be out in the neighborhood in that aspect. And this helps control that by, you know, by us doing these tests and by monitoring these these colonies. Um, once the cats have been uh, have recovered, uh, they're released where they were trapped for the colony caretaker to continue their care. If domesticated animals or kittens are retrieved, they are set up in foster care for adoption. They're removed. Um, we, um, we strive to let people know that, you know, if you have a situation, even if you have 15 kittens, we're going to help you. Um, you know, you don't be afraid to reach out. And, you know, in the future, should a cat fall ill or need assistance, the colony caretaker can call us and they'll receive help retrapping the cat. 
so the cat can get vet care. And we have that situation in our colony. Sometimes somebody gets a hurt foot or somebody gets run, their tail gets run over, what have you. Um, we get those calls and we assist. This service has been provided to over 700 cats in Elton alone just since this tat our tattoo program, our ID program started in 2011. That doesn't include TNR cats done at other low cost clinics um, other than Dr. Carletti's. The tattoo program is, is done out of Dr. Carletti's clinics. That's just her clinic. There are many other organizations that do work with other clinics and uh, those cats aren't even counted on this list. So try to return the supported a great deal throughout the county and, and throughout you know the township. Um, that being said, um, throughout that time, these services have always been sponsored by individuals or organizations, both financially and through volunteer hours, which number in the thousands. Um, I myself dedicate two to three evenings a week doing TNR in Cecil County, and at least one night a week just in Elton. We have done this because we collectively, as a group, the people you see here tonight as organizations know the program is the best chance, in fact the only chance, in solving the problem of community cats. In light of that, we as active citizens serving our community were very offended by what we thought was a decision to contract with another organization to destroy the very same cats we worked so hard to sterilize and vaccinate for the good of the town and for the county. We have been working on our own with your community who prefer a no-kill solution. We have helped them for years, years now, without county and town support. We asked for an opportunity to sit down and discuss what we would offer and could offer, but were dismissed when we did not commit to removing community cats from Elkton. I wish we could have had that opportunity because it may have avoided some of this here tonight for you folks and some of the frustration. Um, you see, TNR is very dependent, and, I, and as, as commissioners, I need you to understand that it's very dependent upon the community's trust of its administration to not destroy the animal if they do not, then they will not ask for help. If, 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 if they think you're going to destroy it or there's a possibility even slightly, they're not going to come to you for help. It's not going to happen. And that's where the problem lies. Um, this was very evident in the town of Charlestown um, before they recently publicly um, endorsed and funded their TNR program. Um, the very next day after they uh, made their press release stating that the cats would not be harmed, the phone calls just came in. It was amazing. Within two weeks we had the colonies located within the town with the assistance of the community. Um, and we had it mapped out. We, we had a plan and we were ready to go. Prior to, to them funding the project, we, you know, we had already done over 60 cats through sponsorship of property owners and, and, and other donations. Uh, since we started uh, with their uh, sponsorship in April um, and with the town and community support, we have done an additional 33 cats to date and removed 14 for adoption. We estimate there are approximately 25 cats left uh, in the townships and the areas to do before the township is a uh, is under control for the most part and will be a maintenance issue for you know as time goes but nothing like it is before we started this program um this is you know prime example of you know trap new to return working is a program that uh we implemented in perryville park started you know eight years ago um as a result of you know the efforts in perryville and, and, and the community's mentality changing and supporting tnr we got a lot less calls coming out of Perryville these days, and uh, we're able to concentrate more on, on your township. Um, we have seen firsthand that you know when townships such as yours get behind TNR right efforts, they become very effective in solving the issue. We have a plan in place, and if the council you know would agree, we would respectively request you know a, a work session to discuss a, a possible TNR program for the town. Um, 
we at that time would be willing to discuss, you know, any logistics or specifics, including and not limited to, you know, the financial aspects and donations and the management of those donations by the township. Um, Cat Crusaders has always offered our help as a volunteer. The people in this room are here to help you as volunteers. Uh, we've done that free of charge, and we will continue to do that for every call that comes in if you're willing to. Well, listen, support. as I said, I, I appreciate uh, uh, adding mm -hmm. as another resource for us. Um, so, you know, we do believe that donations, especially considering the attention this has, get, this has gotten, you know, uh, will help offset some of those costs for the town of Elton, you know, maybe more than you actually think, given the attention this has received. Uh, I would like to say that um, making the decision to remove cats for euthanasia from a township creates an environment where people are definitely afraid to reach out for help. Um, and taking that into consideration, um, you know, if Elkin is resolved, um, or was resolved, had, I should say had been resolved in this decision, which well, I'm very glad to hear that you aren't tonight. I think that that would have created an atmosphere where a lot of these rescue groups would have just stopped working in your town. And I didn't want to see that. We've been working for far too long and, and to really make this work, and we want to see it work. We're here tonight to tell you we want to help you make this work. Thank you. And uh, um, I, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, that being said, the one resident you know, that, that, that did make the, the initial call. Um, that call came to me through the county administration. Um, the county administrator actually uh, knows I have a knack for this type of thing and, and, and reached out and said, you know, can you, can you check in on this for me, Rick? And uh, I did that. I did contact a gentleman and uh, in April we met and uh, I'm happy to say that he was very appreciative of what um, we did for him. And uh, at this point, his colony is almost done and uh, we continue to provide him aid now and he's happy with the program. I think he just needed a chance to talk to somebody to give him the exact, you know, process for him to understand it. And once he did, he was on board. Councilman, uh, commissioners, you know, I urge you to consider this a TNR program. Um, TNR does not exclude the possibility of removing a few problem cats. We do that too. We just can't commit to removing every feral cat in your town. Um, and, and but we're looking to help you not only with the problem cats but with the cats in the community that needs just a little bit of help financially or or physically so thank you for your time thank you so much Rick. okay we've got a handful more but if it's a uh, if we're going to continue to repeat the same and listen it's been great information but uh, maybe shorten it down just a little bit as we continue to move forward we got mr. Michael all Come on down. Charter Hall Road. I'm not sure what town that's in. Um, I'm on a farm between Charlestown and Perryville. Very good. Very good, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, good evening. I'd like to mention a couple of things before I get on to the kitty cats, and, and I'll be brief with the kitty cats. Number one, the uh, car wash on Route 40 across from the Sunoco station. Every single time I go there to wash my car, I am panhandled. You're, you're thinking in Northeast, though. That's Northeast. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But it happens, there are panhandlers all over the place. I walk yeah. through Northeast, I mean through uh, Elkton. I spend, the reason I'm here, I'm not from your town, but I spend a lot of money in your town, the restaurants and stuff Thank like you. that. Um, and they're, they're aggressive. And I um, just want to make you aware. That, yeah, that, that's northeast. Um, now, my house has been robbed three times, and I want to congratulate the uh, police officers for apprehending the people, but I want to chastise the judicial system for letting them all go. Uh, my house was robbed $17,000 one time, and uh, I did get restitution, $1.12 a month for two years. If I collected it all, I could supersize a meal at, uh, at Burger King or whatever. Um, as far as social media is concerned, I am not on any social media thing. 
because of mine. I'm a retired Marine, and because of my position in the Marine Corps, it's impossible for me to be on social media because it would not be a good idea. Um, now, about the kitty cats. I believe you that you haven't killed a cat, euthanized a cat, but what was brought out and what started everything was the idea that maybe that that was going to happen. And I can tell you, um, when I started out with, uh, my, my girlfriend is, is big with, uh, with trap neuter release and, and, and everything. When we started out with cats, I, six months later or so, I was able to have a small fortune. Actually, I started with a large fortune because she takes my credit card and bids on getting cats uh, repaired and everything. One particular one that needed a four thousand dollar operation. She was handling the uh, she was handling the uh, uh, auction for it, and I keep seeing her hand raised, and I'm wondering where's that coming from. And she said, "Okay, it's Michael. Michael got this." <laughs> so the cats are for these people that are involved, for everybody involved with these kitty cats. They are they're all volunteers. Um, bottle babies, every two hours feeding them for weeks and weeks and weeks, every two hours. Uh, I say to people, uh, people say, I hate cats. Well, if you hate cats, our organization's good. Any of the organizations are good because it gets them off the street. If you love cats, it's good because, and you said you've learned a lot about cats in the past. Have you changed your, did you like cats beforehand? Uh, I will tell you, I'm actually allergic to the hair of the cats and dogs. Uh, so it's, I've never been, I've never been able to show the love that I have okay. for the pets because of that. Do you hunt? I do. Well, there's, that to me, uh, you know, I, I'm not a hunter, but I'm not against hunting. But uh, the kitty cats are, are God's creatures. and. Uh, and we absolutely love them. Everybody in here that's here for the cats yep. love these kitty cats, and it's all volunteer. And I'm talking about calls at 2 and 3 in the morning. We're going to get a call tonight about 2 or 3 in the morning. Um, and the money that we donate, we operate on donations only, but a lot of the donations come from not only the time put in, but the money comes from our pockets because we can't stand to see anything suffer. A human or an animal, and, and, and you know, it, it, it starts with when you when you care about something. If you can care about an animal that much, how much can you care about a person? And uh, and you know, we do all that. But uh, I was just upset when when this all started. It was mentioned somewhere in the newspaper that this was a plan, and that's what got everybody riled up. Thank you. And it's not a plan. Uh, well, I think I have one more thing here. Oh, now, I want to thank the, the, the police uh, for the job that they're doing. And I think that if, uh, I wish I could see some uh, money up there for, uh, for more places to incarcerate people and not say, the judge said to the guy that robbed my house, 21 arrests at 21 years old. He wasn't in jail. Um, he said, I'm going to give you a break. And I said, excuse me? He said, shut up. I said, what do you mean shut up? I said, I, I have First Amendment rights. He said, not in my courtroom, you don't. And the, and the uh, what do you call him? The, uh, not the bailiff, the uh, state's attorney said, shut up or you'll be in jail. I said, well, please lock me up. Because if you lock me up, this will be in the newspaper. I'm going to get, I get robbed $17,000 and I'm going to jail for saying, excuse me. But anyway, um, please listen to these people about the, the kitty cats. Hear it loud and clear, hear it loud and clear. Okay. And I'm sorry I confused you all with, <laughs> with, 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 with the, uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, we got Miss Alice Murdoch. Now I just did a one trap for your return. Thank you, I'll then chat to Miss Alice Murdoch, uh, TNR in favor of. Okay. Oh, may I ask where you're from? Uh, Elk Neck area. Elk Neck, thank you. Mr. Tim Kirk, Two Circle Drive, Elton. Oh, Timmy. 
Oh, is that what that is? Yes, I said you. Boy, thank you. I didn't want to say the name without asking. We actually, um, and your name, ma'am? Julie Ryan. I'm sorry, Hi. this is Julie. I'm 10. Hi, Julie. We are volunteers. Speak in the microphone, please. Thank you. We are simply a group of local volunteers that were already feeding the cats locally and kind of got together to form a schedule to, we, we do three colonies. Stokey and Batman are one. One is at a lovely historic location located right near Bridge Street, which could become a very nice place, a sanctuary perhaps for them. Uh, we have a stable poor population. We do have a lot of people dropping cats off. There's a local pet store um, that calls us when they see kittens being dropped off. And we go with that on a daily basis here lately. Yeah. <laughs> We've got three at home right now. Um, but we do have, we keep track of our, our core population. Each month, um, each cat, it's going to be Batman. I think somebody got JoJo. Um, it's listed. We work, uh, Dr. Carletti, um, stays in knitters and always has um, been wonderful with that. Um, when you have to take her from your colony, if it needs medical attention, uh, or is sick, or is hurt, um, she's been very wonderful. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, we had a complaint from a man off of Whitehall Road in the neighborhood there, I can't remember the road. Um, this is Katie, she's now adopted, and this is Tigger, he is now uh, neutered and removed from that area. They were actually cats of people who moved out and left in that neighborhood that wandered over to our colony for the food resources. That complaint has been solved by us. That same week, we watched the meeting and we went out and got them. They are now gone and that situation Thank you. was resolved by us. I had a great conversation with Tim yes. the other day and uh, uh, he educated me quite well. Mm -hmm. And we are willing to work with you. We have signed up. The one thing that upset, I think, a lot of people about the, the contract with the Eastern Shore. The adoptable cats, that's fine, but ferals, a feral in the shelter is a dead cat. They cannot live in a shelter. Um, they're not socialized, even when you trap them, they just bang themselves in the cage if they're truly feral. They would have no hope for adoption. Where would those cats go, I believe is the question. Euthanasia, simply because they're not socialized, is not fair. They live in family and colony groups. Uh, they have their own territory. They also stop other cats from coming in because cats are territorial and they don't want to share their food. And nobody says, hey, come on in my tub and share my food. So our colony is stable, except for people. And one thing I did want to add, um, homeless people there often have pets when they become homeless and they are afraid, like uh, Ricky was telling you, to reach out because they're afraid they won't get their cats back and we need to find a way to maybe help them too so that we can control what's coming in because um, we do have a lot of homeless out behind some of our colonies and some of them care for the cats some of them tear our tubs up but we work with it um, go ahead. well we do we do take care of 56 seven days a week every day twice the day she feeds evenings i feed mornings and um so far, it's been working pretty good out there. Like I say, the population of the, the cats go up and down because of people dropping off cats. And maybe, like Julie says, one of the issues could be they are afraid that they won't get their animals back. Mm -hmm. well, we trapped uh, probably 13 last week. New kittens, people. There's a pet store in that strip mall and behind there. People figure, oh, they'll be okay. There's, there's people that take care of them. Well, you know, we do. But it's constant this time of year yep. but nothing is being when well, we have been doing trap neuter return at this colony for four to five years now nothing from our cats Sophie and batman aren't breeding they're jojo's fixed they're all but it's the new ones that people drop um, that we have problems with when we see them we get them you know but we don't always see everything right away um, the other thing i do want to add is that that area, that historic area that could so be restored and lovely there at that ancient haunted house, um, um, does have a stable population, which would be nice if we had something like Perryville where we had a fence and a, you know, let people know that it's, you know, for, that for their safety. We do have people that don't like them that generally we don't want to bring up, but cause trouble from time to time. 
um, for the cats and for us. We've all had problems with people when we were feeding late and we've had issues. But generally, this is a picture of that historic location, how we feed. Um, we also do behind another grocery store and behind that same area we were just speaking of. And there is uh, 23, 20, and 13, three colleagues separately. And every cat, every month is recorded, marked, uh, they've all been neutered and uh, vaccinated. So we do maintain them well. Very good. I just wanted to let you know that TNR has been working silently through a lot of volunteers and a lot of different groups for many years. Dr. Carletti has been a big, big part of this and is probably responsible for thousands of cats that we don't have running around already because of the DNR that we have been doing on our own as volunteers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, Brianna Lowe? Love? Is it Lovell? Lovell. And 121 Justice Way. I think you're in Elton. I am. All right. Hi, I am a, a resident. I've grown up here. Um, and I am not a trapper. I am not a caregiver. Um, I am just a person that saw some cats and figured I would become educated on it. Um, and the one thing I can say, the tipping point for me, is when I realized that feral cats are not owned cats. Um, just because you feed them doesn't make them yours. Even if you have a cat in your house, I think sometimes you can feel that way, that you, they own you, right? Um, but they are unowned, um, and that in fact that they are community cats. And so that makes them part of the community. And so it's our job to help them be good neighbors. Um, and so that kind of flipped a switch in my head and made me understand the issue a little better. Um, and I do understand that at the heart of this uh, conversation, I think, was the town's desire to be responsive to its constituents. And so you heard a complaint, mm -hmm. you wanted to do something, and now you're open-minded as to how to best handle that. Um, and so I know that we've talked a lot about trout to return. Um, and so I just hope that whatever is decided, um, that the town does its best to educate citizens when they call and they might have a complaint about what will happen to the cats. Um, because I think it's important for people to understand that if a cat is removed, if it is taken to a shelter, even if it's relocated, um, that it's not always going to work, that the outcome might not always be positive. And so I think education is at the heart of everything. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bob Lichtenberg, come on down. We introduced Bob earlier at 105 Walnut Lane. I think he has double dip in here. You have a double dip, 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 but I don't have the place stacked. No. <laughs> First, I want to say it's been nice to be able to speak to the mayor on the mayor's budget and get answers from the mayor. Okay. <clears throat> And speaking about um, Hoppy, I happened to have the opportunity at quarter after five last Wednesday morning coming across the bridge and he was there waving to people that time of the morning. So maybe Charlie, you can take him out there at 5.30 in the morning. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the $70,000 on a sidewalk, is that for the Methodist Church? That is correct. Okay, good. Um, last Friday, with these, these uh, functions you have on weekends, Saturday and Sunday, shouldn't the, the, the uh, people that are putting the project on, shouldn't they be the ones to be putting up the snow parking signs instead of the public works? That's Why good. is the public works putting the signs up for somebody else? I mean, there's two guys from public works. One particularly is, it's, he shouldn't be, he's, he's, he's far better qualified to be putting signs up. I think it ought to be a situation where whoever's having a function has to put the signs up, not the town. That's a good comment. <clears throat> Before you had, this was a while back, right after you were elected, that each councilman was going to uh, report on uh, different departments, like Mary Jo was going to do the town, so forth, and Earl was doing the public works, Charlie was going to do the, the police department, and DJ was going to do the public works. Um, and most of your reports that normally will give report on something, but I don't remember Charlie ever talking anything about the, the reports of anything about the town. 
for DJ, can you enlighten us on what you've done with the public works? I mean, looking into their work habits or whatever. <laughs> the, um, the I don't want to put I, you on the spot, but I mean, this is something that was well, brought up, and and we're going to we're going to do this, and it hasn't hasn't really happened. Uh, I know. Uh, I've been down there a couple different times um, with the oversight of the town administrator, uh, and uh, that there's there's been issues, uh, and I know that those issues are being discussed and, and resolutions are, are being discussed also. Um, I know that there there's different times we've we've had game plans put in place and, and they fall by the wayside to only be put in place again. Um, I can tell you I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on it. Um, I haven't been down there recently, in the last, uh, I'd say two weeks, maybe three weeks. Um, but I know the town administrator's been down there, I know the mayor's been down there. Um, but there, there are issues. And well, I, I can't tell you question, but they else. are They are working to try to get it resolved. Collectively, yeah. we're working. Yes. Okay, yes. Good. I guess the last thing was with the uh, WIMCO. Oh, WIMACCO. Well, Wim, WIMACCO, <laughs> whichever yes. it may be. Yes. Uh, are they going to do a study on the road <laughs> over on Blue Ball Road as far as sidewalks are concerned? Oh, but yes, we're going to have to get a new move over there. You, you know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, I do. Okay, just what? Yeah, what's he talking about? Very good. <laughs> it's well, in, in. <laughs> Thanks, man. I mean, it's a while back that uh, when a building was built, it was required by the town to put a sidewalk from that building to Blue Ball Road, which didn't make any common sense whatsoever because the traffic is on the other side of the road where the housing is. But the town regulations, and it was never done, and I think it, it should be resolved that it should be waived, not have to be done. If you're going to do it, it should be on the other side of the street where you do have pedestrian traffic. Does that make sense? Yep. <laughs> and I think the police, basically, in the meetings, I think the work they have done has spoken for them. I've certainly been with the, uh, the chief and lieutenant in many meetings with the Ministerial Alliance. Uh, we talk on the phone, we send emails, a lot of information is very discretionary, but they certainly will tell you that uh, I'm in constant contact. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe, I'm, I'm, maybe, I'm, what I'm, maybe what I'm getting at, you know, it's, it's, I imagine it's probably a little hard to do, but in the, in the, the Rising Sun of Harold, every week they have a report of how many arrests they have for certain different things and so forth. I mean, I know these guys are busy. As you see, I mean, there's no doubt about it. All police departments are busy. But I think the public would not have a right to know, but maybe he's inquisitive enough to know how many arrests you're having for drug trafficking. And there again, they're making the arrest, but the judicial system's failing everybody in, in, in here. And they do supply that information. That would be up to the mayor if he wants me to dispense some of that information during the meeting. But... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll adhere to that. I think we've been putting it on social media. Some of the uh, uh, there's been some of the reports, but yeah, we can pass that on. profile things. We, yeah. uh, we place on Facebook. Uh, but not everyone can see it. Involved. I think that I think you have a valid point. We need to get it out. But we bring some. Thank you, Bob. And last but not least, I got Mr. Ron Walter. He's on the list here. Yeah, we'll let her talk here in a minute. Ron Moore Drive, 242, Douglas Street. Right. Uh, it's been one year ago, close to it, I first sat down there and I told you about the new broom. You remember the story? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I got old. And it's not sweeping like it should be. I do not believe that this town is not in one accord on this budget deal. Rob, this is not about you. This is about this town. Okay? What do you suggest? I suggest you do some more research and so forth before you go ahead with this, is what I suggest. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I can, you have all the empathy for me in the world on the cats. My wife that passed away put $9,000 on me cat that we had. So I love cats. But I'll tell you something I love more. That's my children. Are you aware 
that the state of Maryland allows a sex offender to live homeless wherever he chooses to live in this place where we live? Are you aware of that? If you're not, you are now, cowboy. Mm -hmm. I help people. You know that. I helped a person, turned around, I decided because of certain circumstances, found out he's a sex offender. Mm. From New Jersey, my name is in the paper, my address is in the paper, that he lives at my house and he does not live at my house. So I had to go down and talk to Mr. Cunningham. I came to talk to the chief about this, okay? And when I found out, when I found out, I am ticked off. This is about my children, for God's sakes, my grandchildren, and every member that is in this, in this place tonight, children, are susceptible to having a sex offender, somebody that may be a Jeff, what's his name, Jeffrey uh, Dahmer? Come on, cowboy. That ain't for Elton, not for me. And I'm mad about it. How did he get in your home? I invited him. I had no idea it was a sex offender. Hmm. I helped him. I helped him. He needed a tar for his vehicle. I, I got that tar for him. I helped people. Mm -hmm. I've helped him to the point that I'm not helping no more. Okay? Because it's not about me. You know what I'm about. Mm -hmm. You all know what I'm about. But I am appalled to that fact, because that street I live on belongs to this town, and he can park at, right in front of my house if he wants to, and there's nothing they can do about it. Not a thing. So I'm, I'm asking tonight, I want, and, and where I live, in Elkton Village, mm -hmm. like you're doing over here on, on Buttonwood, the same thing. I need a permit that I've had that house for 30 years, and you gotta fight with someone else because they can just pull in out of not being respectful. That's all I ask of someone is be respectful and trustful mm -hmm. to me. And I'll do the same in turn. Very good. Case closed. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Mm -hmm. I see Mrs. Clark. Uh, would you like to say a few words? I didn't Come say on that. down. Oh, okay. Come on down. I know Mrs. Clark lives on North Street. I'm the mayor of North Street. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 57 years, the mayor. Right. And my dead rights are stacked tonight. All righty. I wasn't going to say anything, but I, I am now. I don't believe that the persons here know the amount of dedication and hard work and money that goes into caring for the cat. Um, I have two at home. Either you like them or you don't like them. They get on your car, they track your car up. You get out to weed your flower garden, cats have been there. They can be a mess. But the couple that was sitting in front of me, I kind of a benefactor in buying cat food for them. <clears throat> they also buy. In the winter time, when the snow is yay deep, the gentleman has his shovel. Oh, the cat colony is out by the Acme and the Sun Station. Mr. John Peters is the manager of the Big Elk Mall. He and I talk frequently. He is very thankful to Mr. Tim for cleaning up all the debris and trash that is left there by uh, the thoroughfare that goes back there. When the snow is yay deep, he takes a shovel. He shovels out to where the cats have their boxes with straw and all. When the weather is hot, water is carried. It's dedication. And no one realizes the amount of hard work. When it's pouring down rain, they're out there putting in it. And, um, I just, I get up at four in the morning, look here I am sitting here. Um, Dr. Mindy Carlotta was here, but she left. As Miss Julie said, the cats go down to her. If they're sick, if they have a broken leg, they get 
all of their <coughs> medical needs. Uh, they're neutered, and they have a health, they have a health record for every cat. You don't see those cats out there, do you? Uh, actually, I can tell you, I did drive by the other day, and I saw one. Okay. And when, I saw one. Okay. When the weather's nice, they're out on that cement, all laying out there sunning. They don't bother any. They're healthy. They're not in a residence. They're not bothering anyone. And uh, thank you all. And thank you. I called Mr. Van and I guess I bawled him out pretty good on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, that's uh, all I have to say. That was, and, that was uh, one call, yes. Uh, vote for me. It's there. Very good. Well, very good. Uh, we are going to close this meeting, but we do have to have a closed meeting to talk about uh, real estate uh, real quickly, and I promise I'll only be no more than five minutes. Uh, so I'd like to ask everyone to uh, exit the meeting. This meeting is adjourned, but I do need a motion for the closed meeting. Motion by Mary Jo and a second by Charles. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, it will only be a couple minutes.